Chapter 31 Two players of the wilderness you are listening at NovelFull.audio Lockrack didn't think taking over automation would be easy. It was a castle built from soil, but the tall rampart surrounding it was way taller than an average person, so it was a difficult obstacle to overcome. Even if the lizard men were to attack the rampart, they would have to brave through all the arrows being shot at them from afar, the wooden fences in front of the rampart, the rocks being thrown at them from the top of the rampart, and the spears that would try to stab them. If we want the salt mine, it would be better to go about it in a way where we wouldn't see so much blood. Lockrack didn't think this way when taking over the northern parts of the peninsula. This was because the black, scaled lizard men hadn't been considered a large tribe back then. The tribe had to grow in population and focus on acquiring the skills and techniques of other tribes, taking their resources as well as taking over their land. These hostile acts, however, would make the other tribes feel antipathy towards the blue insect god. I could have forced them to believe in the blue insect god. However, Lockrack and the other lizard men didn't want to do that. Other than the reason that they would be taking everything else and didn't want to take away others' beliefs too, Lockrack didn't think it would be likely for the others to have true faith if they were forced. Lockrack knew that simply bowing in front of the wooden statue of Sratus wouldn't cause someone to suddenly believe in it. Faith was something that came from the heart, and fake faith would later turn into stronger antipathy. In addition, Sung Woon also had his own reason as to why he didn't think forcing others to convert was a good idea. Sung Woon was searching for his second species, so he couldn't waste his faith points on useless ones. Therefore, he didn't recommend Lockrack to propagate God to anyone other than the lizard men. As his divinity level rose, he had an abundant amount of faith points, and there was a need for Sung Woon to switch to a two species system. He preferred playing with flexibility in builds. However, he needed to choose right away, and unlike his first choice where he just had to find a tribe to use within his area, the second choice would be crucial in determining a player's strategy and progression of builds in the future. Some say that the first species is just a segue to discovering the second species. Those players would find their second species, transfer all the skills of the first species to them, and stop making use of the first. That kind of strategy was necessary for some games, but it definitely wasn't one to be used in this case. Because his first species, Lizard Men, did better than expected, Sung Woon wanted to find a species that could support the Lizard Men and potentially expand the tribe for his second choice. The northern part of the peninsula is currently occupied by the black, scaled Lizard Men. It's a good thing that the wide terrain, centered on the highlands in the northern part of the peninsula, fit well with a nomadic lifestyle. Some of the residents of the black, scaled lizard men tribe are also living in parts of the mountainous areas. Those lizard men and Lockrax clan were considered one community, as they were all lizard men and believed in the same god. There are lots of other miscellaneous species, but they're all controllable. The most important thing is the wilderness between the northern and southern part of the peninsula. The wilderness is so large that it stretches into the inner continent and northern coast, and even if I take over the southern part of the peninsula, that would be no different than crossing both enemy lines in the inner continent and northern coast. The problem, out of these two places, lies in the northern coast rather than the inner continent area. Because lizard men get cold easily. Species that were relatively good at handling the cold were species that had hair, including orcs, elves, and humans, which the lizard men called minnows. But the lizard men weren't necessarily the only ones weak to coldness. Species with smaller frames like goblins and amphibians were more vulnerable to the cold as well. In fact, if technology related to clothes is developed, lizard men wouldn't have a problem, but that's not the case right now. Spending one winter wasn't a big problem for the lizard men, but it wouldn't be a good idea to send them to a place where there were short summers and saw snow for most of the year. Then it would have to be one of the minnows, or a species with fur. Those with fur are pretty brutal, and physical strength. Wise, they're similar to the lizard men. In the Lost World, battles and war were one of the better ways to deal with things, and Sung Woon was confident in doing so but it wasn't always the best solution. 
Compared to other species, lizard men were smarter than average, but they always focused on battles and challenges. While species seemed pretty similar outside of their appearances, there were actual differences between them. Orcs. They have the fastest reproduction speed and grow the quickest. Before the Holy Orc build came out, they would be used as a starting species and be discarded later, and they also are a bit barbaric. But their intelligence levels actually aren't too low. It always depends on how one would use them. In fact, Holy Orc was one of the metas. But they have a similar physique to the lizard men, so not them. Sung, Woon picked more species to be candidates. Dwarfs. Their physiques aren't too bad, and they have an advantage in caves and mountain terrains. Not to mention their workmanship. But they're too stubborn. An alliance could be made, but the lizard men are also a little stubborn, so they wouldn't be a good match for each other. What about gnomes? They are pretty small, but that might not be a problem considering their preference of science and technology. They'll probably get along with the black, scaled lizard men, who have discovered quite a bit of technology until now, too. However, they are passive when it comes to working with others, and they're individualists. So that doesn't really fit my style of pursuing expansion. Elves are the worst, so I'll just skip over them. Halflings get along well with other species, and they're also very curious. They're excellent in many ways, but points are taken off for their small size. It's also a disadvantage that they don't like cold places. Then out of the general species, would humans be the best choice? Sun, Woon thought about the downsides of humans. They're too dot-faced, and always have problems with all the other species. It's also common for them to be in alliance one day, and then become enemies the next. Their physical abilities are lower than average, intelligence is average, and their sociability is high. So Sun, Woon searched for humans. However, it was difficult to find human tribes within the peninsula, and even when there were some, the tribe was either too small, or it was hard to find one human to focus on. After a lot of searching, Sun, Woon found automation, but at that time they were already too big a tribe. That meant it would be hard to spread faith to the humans the way Lockrack had been doing until now, through miracles. The Lord of Automation has been preaching secularism among the humans within the castle. He's very wary of players, or I mean, gods. Humans would just be a waste of faith points without Lockrack's help. It is a good thing that no other players seem to be approaching them though. Wouldn't it be okay to take my time and see what happens? I want to completely take over the southern peninsula first to eliminate any risks of being attacked later on. However, before Lockrack's black, scaled lizard men went south, the Year's Cut tribe suddenly appeared, and Sung, Woon had no other choice but to deal with automation much faster than expected. When Sung, Woon led Lockrack up north to the edge of the wilderness through a revelation, Lockrack's scouting party encountered the scouting party of Ears Cut tribe several times, which led to a clash of civilization. Clash of Civilizations Two different tribes have come into contact. Experience points, XP, are rising for both tribes. Warning The opposing species have faith. Sung, Woon couldn't do anything but nod after seeing the warning message. The opposing species having faith meant that the tribe belonged to another player. There was nothing for Sung, Woon to be surprised about because it was to be expected considering the scale of the tribe and their calculated movements. Sung, Woon clicked on the local community tab and checked the window that came up. Player list, 1, Hegemonia, there was one other player nearby with whom Sung, Woon could chat, and the player's username was Hegemonia. It was a familiar one to Sung, Woon. Wait, this username, as soon as Sung, Woon realized who it was, a message popped up. Player, Hegemonia, has requested a whisper conversation. Sung, Woon thought about what he should do. Everyone had different preferences when it came to chatting in online games, and Sung, Woon always preferred not to talk to anyone. Chatting with other players could also be a strategy when playing a game, but Sung, Woon thought it was better to use that time to control another character. 
but this time, it seems a conversation is needed. There's nothing else I can do. Sung, Woon accepted the request for a whisper conversation and asked for a video chat. This way, it's possible to get more information from the other person than simply chatting through messaging. Even though it was called a video chat, only their avatars, which players could customize using the God Appearance Helper, were shown. There was no reply from Hegemonia as if they were taking a moment to wonder what to do, and then they accepted the video chat request. Sung, Woon checked the opponent's face. As expected, they wore a spiked helmet which also covered their face. The inside of the helmet was made of metal and covered with shadows, but their fierce eyes were visible, and the pair of horns sticking out from the side of their helmet bent upward and pointed to the sky. The opponent's avatar had matching chest armor below the helmet and a red aura that burned like fire in the background. Hegemonia started the conversation. Oh, you scared me. It was a remark that didn't match the solemn voice that projected from within the metal helmet. Why are you surprised? You're the one who requested for a whisper conversation first. How can I not get scared after seeing your avatar? Funny for you to say. Anyways, Hegemonia continued, long time no see, Nebula. In Sun Dut Woon's opinion, it wasn't all that awkward being called by his nickname, since it was his avatar being shown. Sung, Woon comfortably replied, don't act like we're close. He didn't have the most amiable personality, and Hegemonia became somewhat embarrassed. Well, I couldn't talk to you until now because you always preferred not to talk to anyone, but we've encountered each other in the game quite a few times. Don't you remember us playing the last game of the Lost World together? I do remember, but we've been here for ten years. Don't you think it's normal to not remember everything? No. Our last game was such a good one. I think it was worth remembering. Sung, Woon thought back to the last game to make sure if Hegemonia was right. No. It was so boring. I countered your Holy Orc meta strategy and you lost, didn't you? It should have been a close game for it to have been a good one, but the game just ended like that. Dot hmm. Hegemonia looked down and grabbed their helmet. Sung, Woon thought Hegemonia was probably a soft-hearted person in real life, unlike what the avatar would suggest. Hegemonia raised their head and said, Okay. Sounds good. I've made up my mind. We'll see who the real winner is, Nebula. I'll destroy you for sure. Always saying stupid things. What? Why would we fight now? For whose advantages? Hegemonia hesitated for a moment. The Lost World is basically a free.4. all, multifaceted game. Everyone is fighting for their lives, and you want the first and second ranked players to lose at the beginning. A war of annihilation between two strong players was something to reconsider. In the Lost World, how the game was played in the beginning determined how the middle and second half of the game would turn out, and small losses in the beginning of the game would sometimes return as severe damage towards the end. Even if they could make up for the small losses, there would be no way to catch up if the other players had advanced far more in technology. Of course, if we were able to continuously play more games in the future, it would be worth fighting now for the feeling of triumph. It'd be a gamble worth a risk. That way, a strong rival would be eliminated, and the technology, territory, and a part of the opponent's area would be taken. If the fight were to end without much damage done, the winner would also have an advantage over the rest of the players. However, we won't have any more games to play after this, Hegemonia. This is our last one. Hegemonia scratched the back of their head, which didn't suit the avatar at all. I know. I just got a little carried away. That didn't seem true to Sung, Woon, but he decided to move on. Sung, Woon also remembered Hegemonia's play style. It seemed simple, but they had an animal dot like instinct in conflicts, and they were good at multitasking. And when Sung, Woon looked up Hegemonia on the statistical site in real life, it stated that Hegemonia benefited from fighting others in the beginning of their games. Sung, Woon also thought he could do that, but 
there's no reason to follow a strategy advantageous to an opponent. In the end, chatting was also a part of the game. Chapter 32 A Contradicting Prophecy You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Hegemonia, who was completely unaware of Sung. Woon's intentions, asked, So you want to decide who's the winner with a different method, right? Yes. It seems clear what we both want. Automation and humans. The two players silently looked at each other and tried to read each other's faces. But there was no way to really do that with their distorted appearances. Hegemonia asked, a contradicting prophecy then. That would be the best way to go. Hegemonia nodded in agreement. Prophecy was a skill obtained when a player's divinity reached level 6. Skill. Prophecy, read more. A king received a divine message from a blind prophet saying that the king's son would kill the king and sleep with the king's wife to make the kingdom fall. The king was afraid of this prophecy, but couldn't bear killing his own son with his own hands, so he ordered one of his subordinates to kill his son instead. However, the subordinate couldn't find the courage to kill a baby, so the subordinate left the baby in a field, and the baby was found by a shepherd. BDNVL.M As the baby grew into a young man, he heard a rumor saying that the parents he had now weren't his biological parents. He went to the prophet to find out the truth. The prophet said that as the price of telling him the truth, he would sleep with his biological mother and kill his biological father. Even though the young man still loved his current parents, they weren't his biological parents, and he left his hometown. He went on an adventure. While riding his wagon on the road, he fought and defeated a king that wouldn't get out of his way, and he even fought a monster threatening the kingdom, which had the head of a human and the body of a lion. As a reward for killing the monster, he married a queen, who had lost her husband, and became a king. Several years later, he found out that the prophecy he had tried to avoid had already been fulfilled. The king he had met and killed on the road was his biological father, and the king's wife, who he got married with, was his biological mother. The queen, who was his wife and biological mother, hung herself, and the king dug out his own eyes and walked out of the palace. The kingdom eventually fell. This is prophecy. Unlike the confusing example, the skill was rather simple. A player would set a quest for themselves and their species to predict what would happen in the future, and if the prophecy was fulfilled, they would receive the faith points they spent to give a divine message to their tribe, as well as a reward depending on the difficulty of fulfilling the prophecy. For example, I predict that Lockrack would kill an abomination, and if I help Lockrack fulfill the prophecy, I would get a good amount of XP. However, players of the Lost World didn't use this skill as much. Because there's a penalty if the prophecy isn't fulfilled. If lots of faith points were used to make a big prophecy, the penalty when it wasn't fulfilled would be that much more extreme. The faith points used would definitely go to waste, XP could decrease, causing the player's level to go down, and if the player was unlucky, their characters that were involved could be cursed as a penalty, or they would encounter an unexpected negative event. If the creator, God, can't even control their own destiny, it means that they aren't qualified to be a god. Therefore, no matter how simple the prophecy was, players would commit to fulfilling them. Prophecies that were too simple weren't used too often either because the amount of faith points returned would be less than the original amount used. But it's still used when necessary. If the player is confident. In some that wound's opinion, the best time to use prophecy was now. A contradicting prophecy was when two players made prophecies that contradicted each other's. For example, player A and player B would make a prophecy about individual C, player A would predict that C would die within three days, and player B would predict that C would still be alive after three days. Player A would try their best to kill C in the next three days, and player B would use every means to protect C from dying. That way, only one of player A or player B would fulfill their prophecy, and the other would fail. Thus one would get a reward while the other would receive a penalty. This kind of bet is also possible without making prophecies, but contradicting prophecy is directly supported by the game system, 
so there's no loophole, and the loser would for sure receive a penalty. Unlike making a bet with words, with a contradictory prophecy set up, the loser would still be penalized even if they found the game disagreeable. Therefore, it would be a much more advantageous situation to win. No, regardless of the possibility of his opponent disagreeing with the outcome of the bet, Sung, Woon simply wanted to see a clear benefit if he won. However, that wouldn't happen unless one was a fool. Even if it were me, I would have Lockrack pull back. Hegemonia's ears cut tribe have settled down quite far away, so it seems that Hegemonia had contradicting prophecy in mind to begin with. Then Hegemonia asked, so what prophecy should we decide on? You must know that the Lord of Automation is deciding on his successor, right? replied Sung, Woon. Are you playing tricks with me? To see how much I know about automation. Well, that too. I thought it would be convenient to set a contradicting prophecy based on that. Hegemonia nodded and said, Automation chooses its owner on a regular basis. And that person would become the Lord of Automation. Apparently, the period the Lord can remain in power is different every time, and only the Lord of Automation at that time knows how long their term is. If I am to share some information, I think that's why we, CEO, the Lord of Automation, has been acting as the Lord while hiding his identity, said Sung, Woon. Because if people find out when the next successor needs to be chosen, many would seek the position of Lord of Automation. I'm aware of that. Well, you could always say that after you've heard it. Sung, Woon could see on the screen that Hegemonia was repeatedly clenching and unclenching their gauntlet-covered fist. Sung, Woon ignored it and said, anyways, what's important is that the time to decide the next successor is almost here. And the current lord wants to give his spot to one of his children. Then there would be five potential successors. Sung, Woon nodded. I think we should each pick one of the five children and predict which son or daughter is going to be the next successor. Since there's only going to be one, the prophecies would inevitably contradict each other. And if both of us foolishly guess wrong, then we just accept that as is. Okay. I like that. Sung, Woon realized something after seeing Hegemonia so willingly accept the challenge. Have they also prepared in advance? However, Sung, Woon thought Hegemonia wouldn't have prepared as much as he had. Sung, Woon knew a long time ago that something like this would happen. We, CEO has five potential successors. Do you want me to introduce them to you if you don't know? asked Hegemonia. Really? I would be grateful if you did so. Sung, Woon knew very well about the Lord's children, but was curious about Hegemonia's perspective. The first child, Dan, is a man in his early thirties. He has a strong physique and is trusted by Wee, Seo. I think he's also pretty smart. Two out of the four royal families support him, and he is the most likely to become lord. Well, let's decide that later. Hegemonia cleared their throat and continued to say, the second child, June, is a man in his late twenties. He has a different mother from the first child. He is considered weak and doesn't really show himself to others. There are rumors saying he's not interested in becoming successor. Though there is a family that supports him. His mother's family. Ichem. Who's next? The third child, Jean, is a woman in her late twenties. She has the same mother as the first child and tends to go out a lot. She is hiding her identity, but she gets along well with hunters and ruffians. She's supported by the remaining family of the four. Hunters, I see. And. The fourth child, Kyung, a woman in her early twenties. She has a different mother from the first and second child. I think her mother has already passed away, and Kyung was cursed. There's something unusual about her, so she's alienated by the Lord and the other family members. And finally the last. The fifth child, Min, is a girl in her mid-teens. People say she has extraordinary intelligence and is talented in many ways. The Lord had the youngest at his old age, so it seems that she is adored by him. Hegemonia then asked in return, so what do you think? 
Should we choose right away? Or do you need time to take in the information, no? Let's decide now. If Sung, Woon took time, that would also be giving time to hegemonia. And that was an unnecessary thing to do. Sung, Woon continued to say, why don't we each write and check our predictions on the contradiction prophecy window? If we predict the same thing, the contradicting prophecy won't go through anyways, and we can just click no. And if we choose a different successor, we can click yes and start. What do you think? Sure. Sung, Woon operated the system window. Contradicting prophecy, would you like to set a contradicting prophecy with the player hegemonia? Yes slash no, warning. If you fail to fulfill your prophecy, you will suffer great damage. Please confirm one more time if you would like to proceed. Player hegemonia's prophecy. We.co's second child, We Jun, will become the next successor of automation. Player Nebula's prophecy. We.co's fourth child, We Kyung, will become the next successor of automation. Sung, Woon checked Hegemonia's face. As expected, he couldn't tell what they were thinking. However, they're surprised. Their finger froze. Sung, Woon then said, It's different. Good. I just clicked, yes. Uh. Yeah. Good. Let's start. Hegemonia recovered their confidence and hit the system message with their gauntlet.covered hand. The two prophecies began to spread among automation from an unknown source. The Lord of Automation, we, CEO, tried to ignore the prophecies at first. The families must have done something again. They're rumors that'll die down over time. However, the prophecies did not die down. Why is it June and Kyung? And why are both of them listed? Contrary to what the other family members thought, we, CEO wasn't going to select his first son, Dan, as his successor. However, people had been talking among themselves that either Dan, the first child, or Jean, the third child, would become the successor, so the rumors spreading about the prophecies were somewhat suspicious. I'm sure someone started the rumors. We, CEO eventually hired someone to find the source of the prophecies. It took quite a while, and we, CEO had to look into it a few times himself. But the source couldn't be found. How can this be? It seemed impossible to we, CEO. Both the children and the families were confused, as they knew the time to select the successor was approaching soon. We, CEO succeeded in getting rid of the rumors within the automation castle, but this time, something came from the outside. The four families heard news that the ears cut tribe and black, scaled lizard men were approaching the castle, and gnolls and lizard men, who seemed to be peddlers or vagrants, began to take longer to pass by the rampart. I knew they would come some day. But coming at times like this means, the worst case scenario would be the two tribes forming an alliance and attacking automation, but that didn't seem to be the case. We, CEO got people to get information on both tribes, and he found out that both tribes believed in different gods. The two tribes didn't hate each other, but they were still hostile towards the other tribe and considered them rivals they would one day fight. Both are huge tribes that I can't trifle with. They probably think that the wilderness is too small for both to live in, and that only one tribe should have it. While we're barely surviving in this automation castle, we, CEO knew that he had to do his best in fulfilling his last duty as Lord of Automation and decided to risk his life for it. There's definitely a connection between the movement of those two tribes and the successor and rumors. We, CEO was confident. If I don't die after meeting both tribal chiefs, but it was confidence that he was hopeless. Dot I'll know that I'm nothing but a stone on the board. And like that, we, CEO confirmed his hopelessness. Chapter 33 The Woman Climbing Bedrock You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. It was we, CEO who first felt that the warmth in the tent was fading, but we, CEO just endured the cold air. The fire was dying. Lockrack looked at the dying fire. He broke a few of the dry branches next to him and crushed them in his palms before throwing them into the fire, thus reviving it. 
The fire began to spread and burn the thicker branches that weren't burning before. Lockrack then said, diplomacy and reputation aside, everything about this is simple, isn't it? We.co's silence implied disagreement. You just have to choose between one or the other. Socket, or me. Knowles, or lizard men. The angry teeth god, I think they called it, or the blue insect god. No. It's not that simple. We CEO put both of his hands on his knees and fixed his posture. It's not just simply choosing between the two. Others would think you're asking me to choose between two precious gifts. I think it's rather a question of which would hurt less if a saber-toothed tiger and cockatoo appeared and I had to put my head into one of their mouths. Ichem. It's a pity you think that way, but wouldn't it be better to put your head into the cockatoo's mouth? Sockate also said that the saber-toothed tiger would be better. Lockrack decided to think from We.co's perspective. We.co wouldn't believe any of the sweet words that Sockate and Lockrack said anyways. And his doubt was likely the reason why automation had been protected until now. So what are you going to do, asked Lockrack. Well, I'll take a step back for now. We Seal scratched his beard with his left hand and continued to say, then wouldn't both Sabretooth Tiger and Cockatoo fight each other to eat me? Probably. Then what? There's going to be a winner in the end. But the winner will likely be exhausted or hurt. I wish they would rather be half dead, but... At the end of the day, that would give me more options. The true colors of the winner will be shown. I'm sure that as long as they're exhausted, there will still be more ways to fight. Lockrack easily understood We.co's analogy. He's saying that he'll decide what to do once the successor is selected. Because the distance between us and the successor is greater than the distance between the successor and automation, so he's thinking that he can use a hostage to do what he wants. However, a successor must be chosen no matter what. And the time to choose is almost here. What do you think? asked Weak CEO. That doesn't seem too bad. It would be fine if you don't care who wins between Socket and I, the Knolls and Lizard Men, and the Angry Teeth God and Blue Insect God. I think you are the same. You might think that way. But, you are the same, to me sounds like, there's nothing much I can do. And that you've just accepted your fate as a stone on the board. You think it's too late now, but there were other ways you could have gone about this matter. Wouldn't it have been better to look more into both tribes and see which one was better? If only you realized sooner that you wouldn't be able to avoid both of us. Lockrack's words stung We.co's heart. Lockrack shook his head and continued to say, No, you're right. Doing nothing depending on the situation is also a good choice. You're wise. Thanks for the compliment. Wind blew into the tent, and the fire danced. The shadows of the two men facing each other also swayed greatly along with the fire. This marked the end of the conversation. That I think it's good to end things here. I have something to ask before I leave. Of course. We, CEO leaned over. In the end, it's not only me who's a stone. You are too. Only the board you're on is bigger. Aren't you scared by that? Don't you feel pain or helplessness? We, CEO was saying that Lockrack was also just a plaything of the gods. The corners of Lockrack's lips slightly went up, and with that, we. CEO knew Lockrack didn't think that way. However, he couldn't guess Lockrack's answer to his question. Dot, I'll answer that question once this is all over. Okay. Personally, I hope this is the last time I see you or Sockate. Do you want me to see you off? It's fine. I came as an errand boy, we, so I'll also leave as we. We, CEO got up from his seat, put the leather hood back over his head, and walked out of the tent. No one stopped or looked at we, CEO strangely, as if Lockrack had already said something to them. We, CEO suddenly had the thought that this was his chance to spy on the lizard men, but he abandoned it. It's not important anymore. This also might be a trap. No, no, 
his heart was filled with complicated feelings. It might have been due to his loss of Morales, just like Lockrack said. We, CO had experienced this kind of situation in the past, and he knew that he had to set things straight one by one rather than doing what his heart told him to. We, CO passed through the tents and walked out into the wilderness. He looked at the stars. He at least knew how to tell directions from the stars. After he walked two hours in the direction he chose to go in, a small, low hill appeared. He knew he had come to the right place after he smelled horse dung. His nephew, Wee Wu, who was an A.D.D.D.D.D. camp, was waiting for him along with four subordinates and six horses. Wu said to Wee, Seo, it's good you've made it back safe, Lord. It's not a relief that I made it back safely. But there is nothing more precious than the life of the Lord of the castle. No more jokes. We, Seo took off his leather hood and began to take off the old clothes that he wore on this trip. A subordinate brought him a jar of water, and we, Seo gulped it down. Then Wu asked from beside him, how did it go? Nothing has changed. We'll do as planned. The plan was doing nothing and waiting until the fight between the two tribes came to an end so that he wouldn't get dragged into the fight as well. Wu nodded without any expression. That was the reason we, Seo liked Wu. What about you? I'm sorry. I have no excuses. The black, scaled lizard men are too wary, just like the years cut tribe was. We, Seo ordered his subordinates to scout the black, scaled tribe while he entered to talk with Lockrack. His orders weren't simply to find out how many of them there were, how many among them were warriors, or how many livestock they had. There were lizard men within automation who were long dot time residents, merchants, or vagrants. There must have been an insider of the black, scale tribe out of them, and they would have supported the successor fight. There's definitely a connection to them within us. Finding the connection and cutting it off was the only way automation could escape the game between Sockate and Lockrack. We can't just execute all gnolls and lizard men within automation. There would be resentment within the castle if we did. However, I can't just let it be, either. I need to find the connection and cut it. We, CO poured the remaining water onto his face. Then he gave the empty jug to one of the subordinates and said, Start the fire. And bring a mirror. While his subordinates replied and carried out his orders, Wu said, For the past few days, we looked for lizard men, but we didn't see anyone else other than the lizard men warriors were familiar with. There should have been some passing by, right? Not in the past few days. All right. There's no way that lizard men wouldn't have noticed. There must be lizard men who were ordered to come to automation and gather information about us. We need to expand our range of reconnaissance. If we add more soldiers to the scouting party, there won't be enough to protect the castle. It doesn't matter. The walls of automation will be safe for the time being. The only issue is the invisible wall. Wu nodded. As long as the two large tribes were holding out on both sides of the castle, there was nothing else to worry about the physical defense. Even if automation and the tall ramparts collapsed, they would get fixed on their own, which would prevent invasion from the outside. The real problem was the invisible wall, the non-physical defense. Even we, CO couldn't fully understand the modern concepts of information and psychological warfare, but he was vaguely aware of it. In the meantime, a fire was started, and a bronze mirror was placed in front of we, CO. We, CO took out an obsidian blade from his pocket. The blade was long and sharp, and he held it to his neck. Slowly, he moved the blade along his skin and shaved his dampened beard. It didn't take too long. It was far from Wee.co's first time shaving, and he was proficient at it. Beards had a great influence on the impressions a person gave off, and it was a good thing to have when going under disguise. We Co shaved off his whole beard without leaving any cuts on his skin. Then he looked at the mirror and checked both sides of his face before standing up. He put on the layers of silk clothes his subordinate held up for him. Wee, Seo, with his beard shaved and dressed in proper clothes, 
now appeared as the lord of automation he had presented to the residents of the castle from afar. Let's go back now. We have lots to do. Okay. There must be lots to be done. We, CEO got on his horse and continued to say, I need some time to think by myself, so I'll ride ahead. Follow me at a good enough distance. All right. Wu did as we, CEO said. We, CEO took the lead with Wu riding after him, and the subordinates rode after Wu. Wu suddenly got hit with a drop of water on his face, but when he looked up, the sky was clear. Wu looked straight ahead again. Then another drop of water landed on his cheek. We, CEO was the only one riding ahead of him. Unlike Lockrack, Owen, and the other lizard men, Wu knew reputation well. And reputation wasn't as easy and simple as the lizard men thought. Wu said to the subordinates, aren't you all too close? Slow down a little. The distance between Wu, CEO and his subordinates grew further. And Wu no longer got hit with drops of water. Three weeks ago, when the two prophecies of the gods began to spread, a woman was climbing a bedrock with her bare hands. Those damn children. Her palms were already cut open, and blood was trickling down her arms. By the looks of how good at climbing she was, she seemed to be talented at it, but at the moment, she seemed to be in a pickle in many ways other than her injured hands. Her left ankle was very swollen. The woman wiped the blood on her hands with her face and reached for a ledge. However, that was a mistake. The ledge was a cleverly hidden rock, and the rock tilted as the woman hung from it and applied her weight. Fortunately, the woman had a good sense of balance. She shifted her center of gravity onto her left ankle, which was barely on a ledge, and was able to properly grab the real ledge that was hidden under the rock. But as she put her weight onto her swollen ankle, the pain she had forgotten about shot up her spine. She didn't cry in pain though. She calmly rested her forehead against the bedrock and mumbled while frowning. Damn. Fuck. Son of a, the woman was we, Kyung, we dot Seo's fourth child. We, Kyung thought everything was going well at first. She was used to being alienated by everyone else, as she grew up hearing things like, cursed child, and, she ate her own mother. We, Kyung grew up without the support of the four families nor her own father, and she couldn't live proudly as a child of the Lord, but none of that was a big deal to her. She knew that there were far more people who lived in worse conditions. The wilderness was out there, and countless tribes fought for their own interests. On the other hand, there was order within automation. It was an order maintained by the four families. Although the inside of automation couldn't be called a paradise, being able to freely go in and out of the castle walls as a resident was great in itself. In order to stay as a resident of the castle, people had to do great service, or devote a large amount of wealth to automation. And that was harder for species other than humans. Therefore, we, Kyung decided to live using the last advantage she had. And that was business. Going in and out of the castle walls meant that one could sell goods that were sold outside of automation for nothing and sell them at high prices within the castle walls, and vice versa. In order to do business, a certain amount of the wealth had to be given to the Lord, but we, Kyung was okay with that. Father had also contributed when making me, so I can give him back that much. There's no need to be so upset about it. However, things didn't work out, again. I can't believe the wheelbarrow wheel was broken. You damn schoolboy, you dare lend me something like this. Maybe I won't repay you with salt, we, Kyung, who continued to climb the bedrock, looked down for a moment. Several meters below was what was left of a smashed one-dot-wheeled wheelbarrow. It was a miracle that we, Kyung only had a sprained ankle and bruises all over her body after falling down with the wheelbarrow. It wouldn't have been weird for her to lose her life, but we dot Kyung's thoughts were focused on something else. What a relief. Borrowing a wheelbarrow from a schoolboy was a mistake, but it was a good choice selecting silk for business. We, Kyung thought about how she would collect the silk that was in the wheelbarrow while climbing up the bedrock. And because of this, she didn't notice there was someone with a tail standing on top of the bedrock she was climbing. 
Chapter 34 The man who received commands you are listening at novelfull.audio. We, Kyung continued to climb with her injured body and put her hand on the last ledge of the bedrock. She suddenly felt fatigued when the thought that the ledge would be the last one she had to climb onto crossed her mind. Even if her body were in a better condition, the climb still would have been a life-risking one. It would have been better if there was a foothold on which she could step her uninjured right foot to help herself up, but there wasn't. It's okay. Enduring is what I'm best at. Wee Kyung took a deep breath to prepare herself for the pain. Then as she was about to put her weight onto her swollen left ankle, she heard a voice from above. Take my hand. Ha. Huh. Wee Kyung looked up. There was a hand reaching down from the shadow cast by the bedrock. It was a lizard man. The lizard man in a few layers of silk clothing. Wee Kyung knew that the layers were used to maintain the lizardman's ideal body temperatures, since lizardmen were sensitive to change in temperature. But there's only one tribe wealthy enough to wear layers of clothing made of silk. In fact, Wee Kyung already knew which tribe the lizard man was from even if it weren't for the clothes. The lizard man had black scales. Then the lizard man from the black, scaled lizard men tribe waved his hand and jokingly said, My hand is getting lonely. Wee Kyung couldn't just simply reach out and grab the hand. She believed that her vigilance was what had kept her alive until now. Who are you? Are you just going to stay like that? Have you been watching me this whole time? I think it's a better idea for you to come up here and have this conversation rather than talking like this, but to answer your question, yes. Wee Kyung didn't think the lizard man would be a vagrant robber. However, she had to keep in mind the possibility that the lizard man could be a troublesome rider. Even if you help me up, I don't have anything to give you. I'm broke. As if he found her concern ridiculous, the lizard man asked, is that really what you're thinking about while hanging off of a cliff? Yes, because I can go up by myself too. I know that. But I saw that you were going to use your injured foot to push yourself up. Damn it. And I'm not going to ask for anything. Done talking, the lizard man bent down towards her. We Kyung could smell the unique scent of the lizardman's scales. Some people thought the lizard men's scales had a fishy odor, so they would cover their noses, but others just thought of water and bushes. Wee Kyung was one of the latter. As Wee Kyung hesitated, the lizard man grabbed Wee Dot Kyung's wrist and pulled her up. And while she was still reeling from the surprise, she found herself being lowered to the ground. Don't you think it's a better idea to put your right foot down first? asked the lizard man. I know that too. Wee Kyung set her right foot down on the ground while still dangling and leaned against the wall of another cliff. Then the lizard man let go of her wrist. Did he just pull me up with one hand? Now I see why the lizard men of the black, scaled lizard men tribe are all called strong. While Wee Kyung was surprised, the lizard man was also puzzled. The lizard man looked back and forth between her and the road near the cliff and asked, this road is wide enough for a person to barely pass by. One side of the road is where a rock slide can happen at any time, and the other side is a valley with a several meter drop. Were you thinking of pushing a wheelbarrow full of stuff down this kind of road? It's a relief that this is the extent of your injury. There wouldn't have been any problems if it hadn't been for the broken wheel. Wheels can always break and cause trouble. Shouldn't you have kept that in mind? Given the current technological level, the lizard man had a point. We Kyung knew what to do in difficult situations. So, who are you? Sorry, I haven't introduced myself yet. I am Siran Mule, from the Black, Scaled Lizard Men tribe. Siran Mule. You can ignore the mule part. It's a name that was passed down, but neither I nor my father know what it means. It's not a common name used among the lizard men, but my father wanted me to keep it. That's why I always introduce myself as Siran Mule. You can just call me Siran. We Kyung nodded. Okay. Well, I thought I should at least say thank you since I did receive your help. Thank you, Siran. 
After we, Kyung thanked Sai Ran, she tried to limp past him and go on her way. But Sai Ran blocked her. I'm sorry, but I haven't finished talking. Damn it, I knew this would happen. I told you I don't have anything. That's not what I mean, we, Kyung. When her name came out of Saren's mouth, she reached for the obsidian knife kept at her waist. We, Kyung knew that her identity must not be revealed. We, Seo, who took over automation after his mother, decided to lead automation in a different way after she was assassinated. And that way was to hide his identity. He only made his true identity known to members of the four trusted families in the castle. He had them act as his hands and feet and, at the same time, made the four families vigilant of each other. There was risk to live this way, but we Seo managed to settle matters well within his capabilities. What had seemed like close calls didn't even seem dangerous looking back, and were considered stunts to him several years later. And no one could ignore a stuntman that had several years of experience. We Seo also wanted the identities of his children to be kept hidden and his children had to follow his order. If they didn't put in enough effort to hide their identities, they wouldn't be qualified to become a successor, wouldn't get the attention of their father, and they could meet an untimely demise. We. Kyung knew that black dot scaled lizard men were strong, but her obsidian knife was sharp, and it was long enough to pierce one's heart. She instinctively almost unsheathed her knife, but refrained from doing so at the moment. We, Kyung thought, even if I end up using my knife, I first need to know how he knew my name. It won't matter that I use my knife after I get information out of him. And it's certainly not because he helped me. In addition, Siren was showing both his palms to indicate that he had no intentions of getting into trouble. Siren then said, I came to look for you. Look for me. Did you know who I was? How did you find out? I don't know who you are all that well. Lockrack only told me your name. Lockrack. We, Kyung recalled the familiar name. It didn't take too long for her to recall who it was. Are you talking about Lockrack, the show dot off hunter, Thunder Lizard, first chosen one, tribal chief of the black, scaled lizard men tribe? That we just call him chief. We, Kyung had heard the rumor that the Ears Cut tribe and the Black, Scaled Lizard Men tribe were preparing for a fight in the wilderness. It was a rumor going on among the citizens of Automation as they were the center of the whole fight. If Siren wasn't lying, knowing how Lokrak came to know we. Kyung's name wouldn't matter. The Black, Scaled Lizard Men would have done anything they could to find out. The next question was more important. Why did he ask you to find me? H.M., to be honest, I don't know for sure either. But I do think I can explain to you part of the reason. Okay, tell me that part. Siren organized his thoughts and asked, Are you aware of the two recent rumors spreading throughout automation? Which ones? The second son of the Ta family succeeding in horseback riding. Or the second daughter of the Su family giving birth to twins. Or that the fishmonger finally brought living fish to the market. Dot is that last one real? No. I checked. It was a lie. They're all salted. Well, anyways, I wasn't talking about any of those rumors. It's one you should have known. Even I, an outsider, heard of it. You haven't been to automation recently, have you? You're right. I had to buy silk and went as far as possible to buy it at a cheap price. I was lucky enough to find someone that I could buy silk from. What on earth is the rumor you're talking about? Siren replied, there are two rumors, to be exact. One is that the second child of the Lord will become the next Lord of Automation, and the other is that the fourth child will become the next Lord of Automation. We, Kyung frowned for a moment. They're false rumors. I know you are We.Co's fourth child. We, Kyung, shook her head. I guess you don't understand because you're not human and you don't live in automation, but fighting doesn't necessarily mean fighting with knives. Those rumors are a part of the fight between my siblings, who are trying to become the next lord of automation. I'm not sure why, but it seems that my second brother and I have gotten dragged into a rumor, 
and I'm sure there is someone who will benefit from this. In reality, we, Kyung, did know well about the successor fight. But there was no reason to explain it to a lizard man she didn't even know. My first brother and older sister aren't the type to spread false rumors. It's unlikely they did it. Then was it my second brother or my younger sister? My younger sister is a feeble person, so she wouldn't have been able to resist the urge to benefit from a false rumor, but she wouldn't really benefit from this kind of rumor. It's likely that my second brother was behind it. He always enjoys making things up behind people's backs. He probably wanted to make himself a victim of a false rumor, but thought he would get too much attention brought only to himself, so he got me involved. How childish. We, Kyung then said, anyways, those rumors have nothing to do with me, or you for that matter. Why don't you just say that the black, scaled lizard men tribe sent you to get information about automation? It seems you've somehow found out I am one of the Lord's children, but I am an outcast. There's nothing you can get out of me. It would have been better to look into another sibling. We, Kyung finished her spiel and examined Saren's attitude. And since she had gotten what she needed to know from the lizard man, the lizard man had to die. We, Kyung tightly grabbed the hilt of the knife. Even though Siren was just standing still, there didn't seem to be a place where we, Kyung could properly stab him. And because of the height difference, we, Kyung thought she wouldn't be able to get him. Being strong also meant being fast. We, Kyung already knew that there was a higher chance of failure than the chance of success if she were to attack the lizard man. What if I fail to kill him? Then she would be subject to the ire of the black, scaled lizard men tribe that she had heard rumors about. However, she also couldn't just send Siren away. If word spread that she let an outsider go even when she had the chance to stop him, and especially if her father found out about it, she would die anyway. She had a sibling who died for that. Rather than living with father's disappointment, it would be better to experience the anger of a lizard man. Siren then said to Wee, Kyung, who had made up her mind, I think you've misunderstood something. Looking for you was Lokrak's first command. I need to carry out the second command as well. Second command. I was commanded to protect you. Wee, Kyung felt an uncomfortable feeling somewhere in her heart. It was a feeling she had been ignoring for a long time because others had ignored her. It was strange, and because she hadn't felt it in a long time, she couldn't put a name to it. We, Kyung thought in her head that she didn't want to know what the feeling was, but somewhere in her heart she heard a voice. Do you want me to tell you what it is? Shut up. It's called warmth. I told you to shut up, didn't I? The voice soon faded, and we, Kyung thought it was ridiculous. Has my heart become soft for this lizard man I met only a moment ago just because he said such words? But it was inevitable that she would feel that way. As far as we, Kyung, could remember, no one had ever offered to protect her. Her tight grasp around the hilt of her knife had already loosened. We, Kyung had no intention to stab the one who said he would protect her. She always thought that she was a strict person, but people who remembered her thought of her as a person who became weak when it came to affection. We, Kyung stuttered, W. Wa, what are you talking about? Siren didn't know much about human emotions. Therefore, he calmly told We, Kyung what he knew. You said it was a false rumor, but your siblings won't think so. Neither would the other families. Chief Lockrack said that the succession ceremony for automation is approaching. Everyone is paying attention to the big change that will happen. Therefore, people will react sensitively to even the smallest rumors, and they will want to reduce unnecessary variables. Given the circumstances, the weakest ones are the ones who are eliminated first, Bedo Demwi Kyung collected herself while Siren was talking. Even if I agree with all that you just said, I can protect myself. So go back where you came from. I have no reason to receive help from the black, scaled lizard men tribe. And like I mentioned before, I don't have anything to offer. Look into another sibling. I can't do that. I have received commands from the tribal chief to protect no other sibling, but the fourth child. 
and neither I nor my tribal chief want anything from you. We. Kyung sighed. She didn't think that using logic would make the lizard man go away. So she would have to use emotions. I didn't want to have to show him this much. We, Kyung let go of her knife and walked toward Siran. It seemed Siran was surprised as we, Kyung approached him with empty hands. What is it? asked Siran. Look at this. We, Kyung used her hand to lift her bangs. There was a pair of cylindrical bumps on her forehead. The cross section was so rough that anyone with a keen eye could see that they were cut by hands. As you can tell, they're horns. Well, parts where there used to be horns, to be exact. Horn stumps, one could call them. Dot do they grow back? asked Siran. We, Kyung nodded and said, yes. So I cut them whenever they grow long. Everyone who knows me says I'm cursed because of these horns. There also are people who say such a thing just because they feel distaste that a person has horns, but, but. Those who know me well avoid and hate me more. Because I really am cursed. Siran crossed his arms and looked at Wee Kyung here and there. You do seem a bit messy, but it doesn't look like you're cursed. They really hate you just because of those cute horns. I'm not joking. We, Kyung pointed to her horn stumps and continued to say, I was born tearing my mother's stomach with these horns. And because of that, she died. One of my siblings also eventually died because of my horns. Apart from that, unfortunate things always happen to those around me. That's the real reason why I'm a loner. Siran looked down at We, Kyung with no facial expressions for a moment and said, I'm sorry to hear that, We, Kyung. My condolences. But my mission doesn't change whether you're cursed or not. It's assigned to me by my tribal chief, and I am here to carry out the will of the black, scaled lizard men tribe. What if I refuse? Siran replied in a calm voice, I'll still protect you. I have the willingness and the ability to do so. Chapter 35 Days of Machination You are listening at NovelFull.audio after failing at making Siran scared, Wee Kyung ran out of ideas on how to make Siran go away, so she began to think. Is making him experience my curse the only way? If that were the case, Wee Kyung realized that she would have no choice but to travel with Siran. So I would have to go around with this big, strong, powerful man from a lizardman tribe, who says he will protect my life. Wee Kyung looked at Siran. And Siran tilted his head, wondering why Wee Kyung was staring at him. Wee Kyung wasn't unfamiliar with lizard men, there were some inside automation too. However, even in the eyes of Wee Kyung, who was human, Siran was different from the other lizard men. Not simply because he was wearing precious clothing, but because of all the muscles that could be seen under Saren's scales and the dignity shown through Saren's attitude. I can't believe he has dignity. Even though Wee Kyung had to hide her true identity from others and didn't even like the fact that she was the Lord's daughter, she was still part of high society and felt embarrassed staring at Siran. Well, it actually wouldn't be so bad, would it? Wee Kyung quickly did some calculations in her head. She couldn't send Siran away like this, so she would have to kill him, but the chance of her succeeding was very low. And even if Siran spared Wee Dot Kyung's life, she would have to risk letting someone who knew her true identity go. On the other hand, if she just let Siran stay by her side, she wouldn't feel pressured to kill him and she could prevent the risk of her identity being revealed to others. There was nothing bad about having Siran with her, it was rather good, actually. And he even said he would protect me. That means he would take action and help me if I get into a dangerous situation. This might work. While we, Kyung pondered without a word, Siran, who couldn't bear the silence, said, We. Kyung, what are you thinking? That I'm thinking about silk. What? Now that I come to think of it, I don't think I can just leave all that silk down there. I should go back down. Siran sighed as we, Kyung staggered over to the edge of the cliff and stood there. We. Kyung's plan was easily exposed. 
People would compliment the fact that you were able to climb up a bedrock with that foot, but they would say you are crazy if you go back down with it. I know it, and you know it too. I would stop you from going down, and you would argue that you really need that silk. However, there's a better way to get people to do things for you, we, Kyung. Dot. Asking for help. We. Kyung's face turned red when Siran essentially read her mind. Siran continued to say, if you can't get along well with those around you, the first reason would be the curse. But if people you meet for the first time won't even approach you, that's your fault. Dot. I don't blame you, since you were made that way because of the curse. I'm just trying to tell you there's a better way to do things. I have come to protect you, and there are many things that define the way you lead your life. One of those ways is not to starve, and in order to do that, you should retrieve that silk. We, Kyung lowered her head, slowly walked back to where she was before, and leaned back against the cliff. Please help me. Help me retrieve that silk. I will. Siran began to climb down the bedrock and slid down the rest of the steep slope. He then tied the bundle of silk around his torso and climbed back up. It took less than a minute for Siran to get back to Wee Kyung. Wee Kyung then said to Siran, who had a big bundle of silk tied around him like it was no big deal, um, do you think you can carry that for me all the way to automation? Yes. But let's treat your injury first. Wee Kyung was about to reject Saren's treatment instinctively, but she decided to accept his help this time. It didn't seem that lies and rejection worked with the lizard man anyways. Siran took out a medicinal herb from the pocket near his thigh, mashed it, and spread it on the many wounds covering Wee Dot Kyung's body. Then he applied ointment that had a pain dot reducing effect on her ankle and made her a temporary splint out of wood. It'll be easier to walk this way, said Siran. Where did you learn to do all this? You're better than the herbalist at our castle, ENV We Kyung walked around, amazed at the fact that it was now easier to use her left ankle, and Siran followed her. I learned from Mrs. Zale, replied Siran. Zale. She is Mr. Lockrack's wife. We Kyung nodded. It was said that the tribal chief of the black, scaled lizard men tribe, Lockrack, was in charge of the warriors and defended the tribe from external matters and enemies, while his wife was in charge of the errant boys and would handle the internal matters. Then is Siran one of Zale's errant boys? We Kyung figured she should find out more and asked, then are you not a warrior? Now that I think of it, I heard warriors of the black, scaled lizard men tribe wear water buffalo skulls on their heads. No. I am a warrior too. We don't wear the buffalo skulls often now unless there is a ritual. Though Chief Lockrack still usually wears it. But it is also true that I am one of Mrs. Zale's errand boys. I learned how to distinguish medicinal herbs and treat injured people from Mrs. Zale, and when I got older, I passed the warrior test and learned how to use spears and shoot arrows from Mr. Yur. Yur. He is the best warrior of our tribe. We Kyung nodded as if it weren't a big deal, but she recognized that Siran wasn't just any lizardman warrior that Lokrak chose to send. So he used to be an errand boy of the one who handles all the internal matters of the tribe, and then he learned how to use weapons from the best warrior. There was a need to learn more. How did you even know I was here? I just went to automation and asked around. I learned the way to automation when I used to follow Mr. Owen around. Owen. Are you talking about the storyteller, Owen? Yes. Do you know Mr. Owen? We, Kyung wanted to ask more about the lizard man Owen, who was also famous among the humans, but refrained from doing so because she thought it would be better to stay on the current topic. How were you able to get into automation? A pass is given to those who've dedicated a certain amount of wealth to automation, right? So that's what I did. He's even wealthy. Although, maybe I shouldn't have been surprised since it's the tribal chief who's supporting him. I asked around using your fake name. Mang.g was it? That name suits you better. That I think so too. But I don't think information about me would have been so easily given. 
my human relations are pretty bad, but I'm sure my business partners wouldn't have sold me that easily. Siran laughed. If that was so, how would I have found you? Everyone I asked told me everything once I gave them a pocket of salt. They told me you have been planning on doing silk business for some time now, that they didn't know where you would find silk since the rainy season was coming soon, and that they wondered how you would bring enough silk by yourself to make profit. They also told me that you borrowed a wheelbarrow from them to start your silk business, but that you hadn't come back, so they thought they were scammed, and you had disappeared through the back gate of the castle, and so on. Don't you think you've lost too much trust with your business partners aside from your other human relations? Ugh. Wee Kyung couldn't raise her head. Her face was red all the way to her ears. The trip to automation took a whole day. Siran saw the rampart of automation once again. The rampart was shorter than the bedrock we. Kyung fell down from, but an artificially made fortress was different from things of nature. The fortress was long and disappeared into the cliffs of both valleys. The front of automation was blocked by a rampart, and the castle was located further in and surrounded by steep cliffs on both sides. The rampart had a main gate in the front, where most people would go in and out of, and there was also a smaller gate in the back of the rampart. The path that we, Kyung and Siran had been following led to the gate in the back. The gatekeeper in the back recognized we, Kyung and scolded her for whatever trouble she had probably caused this time, but we, Kyung just ignored them and walked past. Siran then asked, Do you know everyone within the castle? There aren't many who act like we're close, but I am familiar with everyone's faces. Since I've lived here for a long time. And aside from you, the same goes for all the other citizens of the castle, right? Yes. Why do you ask? No reason. Siran shook his head and continued to say, What are you gonna do now? I think it's too late in the day to sell silk. The market should still be open, but I should meet the Gyo family member first. Gyo family member. You probably would have met him too. He's the one who lent me the wheelbarrow. Oh right. You have to deliver the unfortunate news. It's okay. I can pay him back after I sell enough silk. His anger will subside once I show him the silk. And if I tell him that this strong warrior will help me, he might even give me some salt. The Gyo family member in question was a salt merchant. Out of the four families that supported the Lord of Automation, the Gyo family was the one approved by the Lord to trade salt, and this particular member of the Gyo family was one of the youngest out of all the other salt traders. Therefore, they would take on challenges that others wouldn't because of the risk, and at the moment, they were lending things to people and receiving interest from them. The houses within automation were built by digging the soft bedrock between the valleys, so stairs had to be taken to reach the salt market, where the Gyo family member was. We, Kyung, stopped in front of the stairs. The sky got darker quicker because automation was between two valleys. Siran said, it'll be hard to go up the stairs with that ankle. Let's come back tomorrow. No. They'll charge me more interest if I don't go today. Ichem. I don't think it's the best idea. We, Kyung ignored Saren's attempt at stopping her, took a deep breath, and began to go up the stairs. Then there was a sharp sound of wind, but it was drowned out by we. Kyung's footsteps. Whoosh! A sharp dagger flew towards we. Kyung's neck. We, Kyung, who was tired and exhausted, didn't even notice. Then there was a crack behind her. The sound came from Saren's hand, which was on We Dot Kyung's back. Siran had crushed the thin dagger. As Siran opened his hand up, blood dripped down. We Kyung was hit with the smell. Wait, are you bleeding? I knew the curse, it's not because of the curse. A piece of iron came flying towards you. Siran pointed down at his feet and we, Kyung, saw the crushed dagger. You're being targeted just like Mr. Lockrack said. One of your business partners probably revealed everything about what you were doing, and the gatekeeper or someone else revealed that you came into the castle. Those who know you well would have revealed what you would likely do first once you came back. You value wealth, 
so you would find the Gyo family member you were indebted to. The successor battle has begun. Then the attackers revealed themselves. Sung, Woon could see Siren Mule protecting Wee Kyung and fighting off the attackers from the sky over automation. There shouldn't be any other problems here now. Siren Mule was able to defeat the attackers without much difficulty, which proved that Lockrack's choice of sending him was a good idea. It wasn't a good idea to send too many lizard men to automation. That would attract the attention of the Lord of Automation and made him more suspicious of all the lizard men. Then others would be vigilant towards them as well. Then what's next? Things would become advantageous for Hegemonia. But one lizard man is okay. And if he's with the fourth child, who no one really cares much about, everyone will just think the lizard man is a vagrant tagging along with Wee Kyung. There was another reason it wasn't a good idea to send many lizard men into automation. If lots of lizard men entered automation and began to make others feel pressured, Hegemonia would do the same. Then we would just end up consuming each other's power. And there would be no point to having a contradicting prophecy. As long as the opponent doesn't make an unreasonable move first, there's no need for us to step up either. Sun, Woon traveled the wilderness back and forth and handled situations at automation every now and then. And just as expected, nothing happened outside of Sun. Woon's expectations. Successor fights are all like that. Siren eventually figured out the identities of the attackers. They were vagrant goblins from outside of the castle. Apparently, a man in a mask had ordered them to kill Wee Kyung. Siren determined that the goblins would be useful. He then asked Wee Kyung to give him some silk in order to give to the goblins to placate them, and she eventually acquiesced. Wee Kyung suspected the one ordering the goblins to attack her was her first brother, Wee Dan, who was supported by the Gyo family, but that wasn't true. The day after Wee Kyung was attacked, Wee Dan, who was most likely to become successor, disappeared from automation. The Gyo family and Sang family, who supported Wee Dan, suspected each other for Wee Dot Dan's disappearance. Siran then inspected Wee Dot Dan's room and inferred that Wee Dan was already dead, and that the dead body was hidden so that the two families that supported him would destroy each other. However, if we, Dan was really dead, there wasn't much space within automation for a dead body to be hidden. Through a surprising idea, we, Kyung found we, Dan's body and inferred the criminal was someone unexpected. Every day after that, horrible, bloody incidents occurred. The five, no, for siblings, and the four families that supported them, began to feel external pressure from the Ears Cut tribe and the Black, Scaled Lizardmen tribe, which had been eyeing what was going on in automation from afar. When the machinations of the siblings were affecting the lives of those within automation, the only ones who weren't affected at all were the mud soldiers roaming the fortress, repairing places that had collapsed or broken down. Three weeks passed by, and the Lord of Automation came back from traveling in secret. There were now only two siblings left. Chapter 36 Firefly you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. A few figures came together and sat down in a dark room. The expensive wool carpets decorating the floor revealed how wealthy the owner of the room was, and the one who was sitting at the head of the table was Wee Kyung. Wee Dot Kyung's horns had grown for the past three weeks and were now as long as one's palm. Wee Kyung wanted to cut them off, but Siran stopped her when he saw how much she bled from doing so saying that he needed to protect her. We Kyung touched her horns. It felt strange to have them so long. Then she looked at the people sitting in her room, who she was even more unfamiliar with than her horns. Gathered here were Sai Ran, the Gyo family member, two goblins, an old miner of the Su family, and a fishmonger of the marketplace. We Kyung unconsciously mumbled to herself, how did this happen? Siran, who was next to her, heard what she said and replied, H.M. It seems like a good idea to review what has happened until now before starting a revolution. There might be something we've missed. Oh, no, that's not what I meant, first off, two rumors have spread within automation. 
And at the same time, Chief Lockrack of my tribe commanded me to protect Wee Kyung in the meantime. Wee Kyung, Wee Kyung felt like she heard her name more in the past three weeks than she ever had in her life until now. In the first week, several attackers had called out her name to make sure they didn't get the wrong target. In the second week, those who wanted to form an alliance with her or pretend to do so before betraying her called her name countless times. And in the third week, everyone acted like they forgot her fake name, Mang.ji, which they had been calling her until recently. Wee Kyung was pretty sure that even children running around in the alleys would know her real name by now. But those children weren't seen these days due to the chaos within automation. Even the market that never closed during the rainy season had been closed for the past week. The secret she had kept for her whole life wasn't even important anymore. We went to meet the Gyo family member as soon as we came to automation, said Siran. We did get attacked, but I think it was rather a good thing that happened. We were able to placate the attackers and, in the end, benefited from it. And at those words, a goblin in the corner silently bowed his head. This goblin was the one who led the goblin vagrant group. He seemed to have lost his ability to speak after hurting his neck. The other goblins all called this goblin boss, so everyone else did too. Siran continued to say, We first thought that the goblin group had been hired by the Gyo family to attack Wee Kyung, but that wasn't the case. The day after Wee Kyung was attacked, Wee Dan disappeared. It seemed strange that the Gyo family and Sang family were both keeping quiet about Wee Dot Dan's disappearance, so we decided to secretly go into Wee Dot Dan's room and, we found a spot where splattered blood had been wiped off, said Wee Kyung. Lizard men have a better sense of smell than humans. Looking at the size of the pool of blood, the blood loss seemed great enough to be fatal. That meant we, Dan was dead, but something wasn't adding up, houses in automation are built by digging up soft bedrock, and thus they are all tightly packed next to each other. With the days getting hotter as the rainy season approaches, there wouldn't be many places to hide a dead body within automation. If it hadn't been for Wee Kyung, we wouldn't have been able to find Wee Dot Dan's body in time. What Wee Kyung did was simple. Hiding a dead body was easy, but the bad odor and the fact that it attracted bugs made it easily found. This was because corpses decomposed. And in order to fix this, measures had to be taken to prevent the body from decomposing. Dot in order to prevent the body from decomposing, it just needs to be preserved in salt. And to preserve something as big as a human's body, a large jar would be needed. A place where it wouldn't be awkward for such a large jar to be placed would be the hunter's hut. I didn't know you would be the first one to act on this matter, said the Gyo family member. We, Jean was a hunter wasn't she? I assume it was instinctive of her to do so. She wanted to eliminate the one who would be of most danger to her, said Siran. However, Wee Jean got played by her own younger sister, Wee Min, said Wee Kyung. Wee Min was a schemer. She wouldn't miss out on an opportunity if she saw one, replied Siran. Then how do you explain Wee Min eventually being defeated by her brother, Wee Dot Jun, asked Wee Kyung. It's called a trap to catch hunters, Wee Kyung, replied Siran. A trap to catch hunters. Siran nodded. It's something Chief Lockrack told me. When Chief Lockrack was younger, he used to be an errand boy and went hunting with a warrior, and that warrior confidently told him that they would catch a big boar. Luckily, they really did find a big boar. Apparently the warrior then threatened Chief Lockrack to not make a sound no matter what happened, and that if they failed to hunt the boar, it would all be Chief Lockrack's fault. So the warrior began to concentrate on the boar in order to kill it with one spear throw, and because he was so concentrated, he didn't hear the rustling sound that came from the bushes. Chief Lockrack was going to tell the warrior about the small rustle he heard, but soon remembered the warrior's words and stayed quiet. And just as the warrior was about to throw his spear, a saber-toothed tiger jumped out from the bushes and bit the warrior's neck. Then the saber-toothed tiger saw Chief Lockrack, broke the warrior's neck, and ran away. Oh, so you're saying the most dangerous moment is when one aims for their prey, right? 
Siran chose his words carefully and replied, um, simply put, yes. What I'm trying to say is don't be too arrogant, and don't hunt by yourself, but rather ask for help if there is someone who can. It also means to be careful because saber-toothed tigers target the backs and necks. There would have been no reason for me to tell that whole story if it were as simple as that. Listening to Siran and we, Kyung, the Gyo family member sighed. After we. Dan's body was found, the Gyo family member found out that we, Kyung was we. Seo's fourth child, and that she was a potential heir who could become the next lord of automation. Then he gathered all his physical and human assets and bet everything on we, Kyung. His true nature was closer to that of a gambler than a merchant. I've heard enough of your lizard men story now, said the Gyo family member. The more important thing is how we're going to catch we. Jun. The Sang family eventually defected and took Wee.Jun's side, so we Jun is currently supported by the Sang family and the Ta family. The Su family, who used to support Wee Gijin, haven't said anything yet. Siran replied, you're saying we should get back to the point right? All right. My opinion is that we don't need the support of the Su family. There might be a big battle. Each family can provide as many soldiers as they wish with the Lord's approval. Our opponent has two families, and we only have one, so we're at a disadvantage. The battle isn't what's important. I still have enough wealth. I might be able to convince the Su family with it, said the Gyo family member. Haven't you met the head of the Su family before? He is a man of integrity. He won't change his mind because of wealth. You won't know so well because you're a lizard man, but people like him are the ones most likely to accept these kinds of offers. We, Kyung thought about whether she should stop this conversation, which had started out as a debate but derailed into a childish fight. It had been a lucky three weeks. Siran saved we. Kyung's life many times, and she received his help for so much more. Siran wasn't the only one who had helped her. Those she thought had ignored her and hated her all this time began to help her out without asking for anything in return, and there were also people who sacrificed things for her. Or it might be a cursed three weeks. We. Kyung remembered her three siblings that lost their lives. Her first brother, Wee Dan, always felt sorry for Wee Kyung. He was scared of her curse so he never really got close to her, but whenever Wee Kyung was in trouble, he would secretly have other people help her out. He might have thought I wasn't even qualified enough to become a successor. Her older sister, Wee Jean, was one of the few people that didn't take Wee Dot Kyung's curse seriously. When they were younger, Wee Jean would take her out to the forest to hunt together, and her sister would teach her hunting techniques. But she did seem to get bored of playing with her younger sister as she got older. Wee Dot Kyung's younger sister, Wee Amin, learned things quickly so she always enjoyed listening to Wee Dot Kyung's stories. I do think she only listened because she was lonely. But she did become bored as I wasn't able to tell her any new stories. After thinking about them, her feelings became a little complicated, she didn't think they were the most ideal siblings, but she then thought of her last sibling. Wee Dot Jun, Wee Jun was a complicated person. Some thought that he was simply hard to get close to, but Wee Kyung didn't think so. And she thought he was always hiding something even though some said we, Jun was introverted and weak. There hadn't been a way for her to find out what that was, but through the past three weeks, she found out exactly what we, Jun was hiding. His teeth. They're too sharp and dangerous to show everyone else during any ordinary day. We, Jun was a monster. We, Kyung thought that we, Jun knew this would happen someday. Unlike Wee, Dan, who preserved his powers, it seemed that Wee, Jun had already laid down his groundwork in advance, keeping in mind who would act in what way, just like in a game of Go. Wee, Jun never played any moves just because. He always did his best, and with his skills, he defeated his three other siblings, Wee, Dan, Wee, Jean, and Wee Dot Min. It was Wee, Jun who hired the goblins to kill me that first day. We, Kyung brought her attention back to the room and heard Siran and the Gyo family still bickering. So what is the black, scaled lizard men tribe planning? 
there's no such thing. Well, to be exact, I don't know. My only duty is to protect Wei Kyung. Just as Wei Kyung thought she should stop the two from fighting, someone ran into the room. There's news from outside the castle. It was the Gyo family's errand boy. What is it, NV. I think our scouting party has found the Lord. Those sitting in the dark room exchanged glances with each other without saying anything. Wei Kyung and Wei Jun both realized that their father, the Lord of Automation, had been outside the castle. For the past two weeks, their father had been dealing with external matters, so he couldn't pay much attention to the successor fight that was going on. Moreover, this time he left with all his subordinates that would have informed him about the news inside automation as if he were in a hurry. And within that week, the secret of Dan's death had been revealed, and the two other siblings had died. The absence of their father had accelerated the fight for succession. And once father comes back, there's no way to know who the successor will be. We, Jun, who is at an advantage right now, will try to make things final before father comes back. If there was only one child left to become successor, we, Seo wouldn't have to think about who to choose. We, Kyung then asked, when do you think he'll arrive? Our scouts were on fast horses, and the Lord wasn't riding too quickly, so he should get here tomorrow morning. Oh. And there was also news that the scouting party told me to relay only to Wee Kyung, what? The errand boy crossed the room and approached Wee Kyung. Wee Kyung craned her ear towards the errand boy as the errand boy indicated that he would whisper to her by putting his hand to his mouth. A hot liquid splattered onto Wee Dot Kyung's face. Wee Kyung turned to see Siran stabbing the errand boy's chest. Ha! Huh. He was taking out a knife. Siran pulled the blade out of the errand boy's chest, and an iron knife fell to the floor. As the errand boy collapsed, it turned out that there was another dagger stuck in his back. Everyone looked at the goblin boss, and the goblin boss tilted his head as if he was wondering why everyone was looking at him. Then Siran asked the Gyo family member, is he a member of the Gyo family? Yes. I would have been suspicious of him from the beginning if he weren't. More of the Gyo family could have been bribed. We cannot trust the Gyo family anymore. But, just as the Gyo family member was about to protest, a scream came from the outside. Followed by the sound of metal clashing against each other. Siran said, they weren't simply bribed. We, Jun must have made up his mind. That we will take care of our own family business. All of you should run away. They won't be able to catch you if you blend in with the crowd and run in different directions. Have you thought about which would be the best way to escape? Yes. The path Siran chose was the sewer. Without a sewer, automation would flood whenever it rained, but fortunately, the ancient sewer allowed automation to still exist to this day. However, it wasn't an easy escape route. The sewer was filled with sewage that came up to a human's knees, and the sewer system itself was very complicated. Especially on days it wasn't raining, the sewage made a great ecosystem for bugs. Siran discovered this escape route by himself, but he wished there wouldn't come a day where he would have to use it. He was also worried that Wee Kyung would hate bugs, but surprisingly, Wee Kyung was the first one to jump into the sewer. Wee Kyung and Siran kept getting hit in the face by flies and fruit flies. I'm used to bugs, said Wee Kyung. You're, used to them. Wee Kyung nodded. It was when I was younger. I don't remember too well, but the wooden floor seemed to be very loose when I went into the bathroom. The floor broke, and I fell down, definitely landing on a pile of shit. I think I fell all the way down into the sewer. Did you trip and fall then too? Yes. I managed to survive with no injuries. Because I fell into the sewer, there was no ray of light, and I couldn't find my way out. It was full of sewage too. I really thought I would die there, but, but. Very interestingly, dots of light were floating in the distance. So I followed the light and saw the dim outline of the sewer. Of course, I couldn't leave the sewer just like that. I was curious about the light, so I followed them. 
and once I caught one of them, it turned out to be a bug. Light was coming from its stomach. Sai Ran listened to Wei Kyung while following her. He blinked a few times and said, I think, that would have been a firefly. Firefly. And that's not a species of bug that lives around here. But it was. There. And because of them, I was able to find my way out. HM, then it might not be the kind of bug I know. It might not have been a firefly. However, as Sai Ran listened to Wee Dot Kyung's description of the bug, he was sure it was a firefly. That's interesting. The fact that they were in a place where they couldn't have been, fortunately, they didn't have to walk too long down the sewer. The exit led to the basement of the Su family's hunter hut. Once they got to the front of the stairs to the exit, Sai Ran grabbed Wee Dot Kyung's shoulder, who had been walking in front of him. I'll go first from here on out. There's no noise or light coming from the exit. There wouldn't be anyone there. But just in case. If something happens, turn around and run. We, Kyung nodded as she didn't think it was necessary to argue with Sai Ran, they had done so many times in the past three weeks. We, Jun has been on the offense until now, and that means he's becoming impatient. If we get out of here, we'll have the chance to fight back. After waiting for a while, Wee Kyung figured it would be okay to go up to Sai Ran. Just as she stepped onto the stairs, she heard fighting coming from above. Wee Kyung only came to her senses when she was already on the next step with her knife out. The fight was already in full swing. It was a dark night, and the moon was hidden behind the clouds. Everyone was just swinging their swords relying on the faint light reflected off their swords. However, lizard men were easier to spot among the humans. Sai Ran then said to Wee Kyung when she came up, Why on earth did you follow? Wee Kyung didn't reply. Behind the fighting men stood a skinny man. It was Wee Dot Jun. Dot it's too late, said Wee Jean. That lizard man is no different than dead already. Wee Kyung asked, What do you mean? Shut up, Wee Dot Jun. As Sai Ran turned to Wee Jun, Wee Kyung saw a spear pierce through Saren's back. Chapter 37 The Second Best Warrior You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. HM, he can still talk. Wee Jun looked at Sai Ran as if he was seeing something strange. If Sai Ran was an ordinary human, it wouldn't have been weird for the level of injury to kill him. Not only can I talk, two soldiers ran toward Sai Ran one charging straight on from the front, and the other coming from behind. Sai Ran grabbed the spear wielded by the soldier coming from the front and whirled around. The soldier lost his balance and fell. Sai Ran used the other arm he was holding his sword with and cut the neck of the soldier that was coming at him from behind. Then he stepped on the fallen soldier's neck. There was no scream, only the sound of bones being broken. That I can also fight. A quarter of the moon became visible for a moment through the clouds and soon disappeared again. The soldier whose throat had been cut tried to stop the blood spouting out of his neck, but eventually collapsed. The black dot scaled lizardman's outer scales seemed to flash for a moment. About fifteen other soldiers flinched and hesitated to attack Siran after witnessing what he was capable of. Siran huffed at the scared human soldiers like he found them laughable. He then grabbed the spearhead that had pierced through his chest and wrapped his tail around the rest of the spear protruding from his back. Crack. Siran snapped the spear that was getting on his nerves without even making a noise. He threw the broken spear onto the ground and pushed aside the enemies that were between him and Wee Kyung. Wee Kyung, if you aren't going to turn around and run, come here. Okay. Wee Kyung went and stood behind Siran. Sai Ran glared at the enemies. Are you aware that the correct thing to do was to run? Yes. Then why did you choose the wrong thing to do? I don't know. Sai Ran glanced back at Wee Kyung. Their eyes met. Wee Kyung then continued to say, I don't know. All I know is that humans sometimes make the wrong choice. Even if it would lead them to destruction. Let's use the word people, not humans. Why? 
Chief told me to protect you, but he didn't say to risk my life. He told me that I could always give up and return home if things got dangerous. We, Kyung thought this was strange. In the past three weeks, there were many situations where not only we, Kyung, but Saren's life was in danger. We, Kyung didn't tell Siren, but ever since she began to rely on Siren, she felt grateful to be able to wake up to another day. Then why are you still here? Didn't you say so yourself, we, Kyung? You don't know why, but people sometimes make the wrong choice. They choose it even if it would lead to their destruction. Someone whispered to Wee Jun, who was standing at a distance, and knit his brows. Then Wee Jun asked, why are you standing there and not killing them? A soldier quietly said, that lizardman's power is incredible. And, there's also a rumor that he's a chosen one, don't be stupid. There's no reason for him to hide his powers even when he got a spear pierced through his back, is there? The rumor was spread by Wee Kyung, and it still had an effect. However, it seemed that Wee Jun already knew it wasn't true. Lizard Man. If you really can produce and summon a thunderbolt, strike me. Dot. I knew it. Wee Jun spoke of an old rumor. He didn't know if it was true himself but he thought it would be worth bringing it up if it would help the soldiers maintain their fighting spirits. From what I know, there was a limited number of chosen ones, so there's no need for the blue insect god to pay attention to such a low dot level warrior like him. Dot. Siren kept silent. Then we Jun continued to confidently say, look. He can't even refute it. I will give another cart full of silk to those who cut their necks. The eyes of the soldiers changed. The soldiers all charged at them, but Siran warded all of them off. However, even when Siran knocked the soldiers down, reinforcements came to take their places in twos or threes. As time passed, the battle tilted towards We. June's favor. Siran whispered to We Kyung, "We'll run towards the right. It'll be hard to break through all of them if I carry you, so you must follow me well. But there's a wall." Just like Wee Jun said, I don't have the ability to make lightning strike. But I'm definitely not a low dot level warrior. Wee Kyung thought it was only obvious. I've known that ever since the first time we met. Then how high do you think I rank? I, I don't know, Wee Kyung thought Saren's question was a rather childish one to ask given their situation. Tribal chief is the chief, so we don't debate his strength. Mr. Yur is the best warrior in our tribe. I know that. And I am the second best warrior. People don't tend to remember the second best. We, Kyung was able to feel the small wound that Siran, who was very strong, had inside of him. It would be painful to remain as the second best among warriors. The praises always go to the first. If it wasn't for this kind of situation, he wouldn't have even revealed this weak side of him. Siran glanced to the right and said, remember, we're going to the right. Like I said, there's a wall to our right. It soon won't be. What? Stick close to me. We, Kyung wondered what was going to happen, and we. Jun's soldiers never could predict what Siran would do. The route for retreat that Siran pointed to was a wall made of rock. It was a soft rock which could easily be broken with a low dot quality iron chisel, and the wall was likely hollow as it would have been a part of someone's house, but a wall was still a wall. It had been recognized by the humans as a geographic feature, and if it was blocking a path, they would find a way around it. If the wall was able to think, it would probably think that it would remain where it was for centuries until it wore down itself. However, Siran thought differently. Siran was the second best warrior of the black, scaled lizard men tribe. The second best warrior had the authority to handle things their own way if there was a disagreement between them and their superior. If there isn't an exit, Siran put his right arm onto his left shoulder and bent over. A soldier seemed oblivious to what Siran was doing and got in between Siran and the wall. You make one. Siran then ran straight towards the wall in a tackle position. The soldier, who was raising his sword, bounced off of Siran. 
he couldn't hurt Siran nor slow him down. Bang! Siran broke through the wall and disappeared. A dust storm arose from the collapsing wall and covered everyone's field of vision. Wei Kyung was the first to realize what had happened. She quickly ran through the dust storm and then the hole that Siran had disappeared through. A soldier then shouted to Wei Jun, he, he broke through the wall. I know that. What are you doing not chasing after them? Wei Jun shouted and commanded his soldiers. The soldiers took a moment to light each other's torches before giving chase with the excuse that the dust had made their surroundings too dark. Anyone could tell that they were all trying to buy time as they didn't want to be the first one chasing after Siran. These stupid cowards. We, June recalled the time when the Knolls came by three weeks ago. Should I have also brought in outside forces? Then would things have ended sooner? Five Knolls had come to him, and the Knolls knew very well about the situation inside automation, and about we. June. They had strong claws and legs when compared to other gnolls, and were strong warriors. They even said they would help Wee Jun without any cost. But Wee Jun rejected their help. Not only did he reject them, he kicked them out. They said if I became the next lord, automation would be full of those who believed in the angry teeth god. And that was all they wished for. They didn't tell Wee Jun to believe in the angry teeth god but simply said that it would eventually happen. In other words, it would be inevitable even if we, June didn't believe in the god and tried to prevent that from happening. If I become the next lord, gnolls and lizardmen will become our next enemies. I can't receive help from such a faction. And I wouldn't stay on the sideline when the next potential lord receives their help either, the other siblings had already believed in either the angry teeth god or the blue insect god. It was a good thing that they were eliminated sooner. However, Wee Jun couldn't opt for machination and scheming to reach his goal this time. Father is coming. I need to finish this off before sunrise. Wee Jun looked at the direction his last sibling had disappeared in. It won't take long if they ran that way. I can't help but think we made a mistake in choosing our escape route, said Siran. To be exact, it's my mistake. I should have looked for a better route since I lived here. It was too dark to look for a different route. And Wee Kyung, you're not a minor. Wee Kyung decided not to blame herself after hearing Saren's words. She wasn't in the greatest situation to blame herself either. The route that the two took led to the salt mine. It was a dead end. There was another problem, the interior structure of the salt mine was very simple, which made tracking them easy and because the path gradually became narrower, it would be difficult for someone big like Siran to move through. It was only disadvantageous for them to hide deeper into the mine. And in addition to that, Saren's wound was only getting worse. As they walked further into the mine, Siran began to limp, and Wee Kyung had no other choice but to tell him to stop at that point. Siran slowly nodded. Wee Kyung took off her coat and pressed it against Saren's wound, but blood kept seeping through. W. Wouldn't it be better to take this out? Without any other treatment, blood will gush out if we do that. Then I would not only have to fight Wee Jun, but also against my own blood. I would likely die. Shit. What should we do? There are things that can't be helped, Wee Kyung. At Saren's words, Wee Kyung felt like something she had exhausted long ago was about to come out again. It was tears. Wee Kyung, are you crying? Don't make fun of me. It's not the time for that. No, it's not that. It's because I like it. Are you crying for me? Yes. You big lizard. How are you saying you like anything when you're dying? Don't worry. I have seen lots of people, both enemies and teammates, die by spears. I don't know much, but I do know that if I can move this much, there's a high chance that I'll live if I get proper treatment. Don't speak like you're talking about someone else. How would you receive proper treatment in a situation like this? Saren's mind went blank for a second, and he knew it was because he was losing too much blood. 
but he was still able to remain conscious for now. The problem was Wei Kyung, who was crying as she didn't trust the words of the second best warrior. BDNV Siran asked, are you thinking about your curse? Yes. You think all this happened because of a curse. Can you say otherwise? That we've done a lot of reasoning for the past three weeks. So try to do that this time too. Start with the answer that you, we, Kyung, are not cursed. We, Kyung wiped her tears with the back of her hand and replied, How come? Think about the traps and attacks you've encountered for the past three weeks. Your siblings were always behind them. It wasn't a coincidence or because there was a god that cursed people somewhere out there. People with clear hostility were the ones who attacked you, we. Kyung. I know that, but, of course you would want to say that all that hostility arose from your curse, but think of it in the opposite way. How have you survived until now? The fact that you met me, that boss decided to help you in exchange of silk, that the Gyo family member helped you despite the interest you owed him, as well as the truth that the old Su family miner told us and the secret of the fish merchant that saved our lives, aren't these all results of coincidence? We, Kyung, do you know what goodwills that happen coincidentally are called? We, Kyung replied, luck. Yes, it's luck. We, Kyung thought time stopped for a moment. It was the voice of her heart that had been absent for the past three weeks. You were born blessed, not cursed. However, someone, was afraid of their power. Shut up. We, Kyung held on to both of her horns, and time began to pass again. It seemed that Siran wasn't able to hear the voice inside We, Kyung. You're right. It's luck, said Siran. I took a look at the wheelbarrow that I retrieved the silk from when we first met. The wheel was broken because someone tampered with the axle of the wheel. I wasn't able to tell you at the time, and I suspected it would have been one of your siblings after I learned that the Gyo family member was on our side. What? But I borrowed the wheelbarrow before the actual successor fight began. I thought that was strange too. Because until then, the fight to be the successor wasn't a fight where siblings would kill each other. Don't you also find it strange that someone would want to kill Wei Kyung, who was least important at the time, on purpose? But that evidence of tampering with the wheel on purpose suggests that someone had steadily been targeting you for a while. Wei Kyung felt her head ache. Don't you know the answer to this mystery? I told you to shut up, didn't I? Siran began to worry as Wei Kyung felt a headache. Wei Kyung. No, it's nothing. It's no time to worry about me, you don't have to worry about me because, that's not true. Please. Don't say the word I don't want you to say. Okay. Siran said it anyway. I believe in Wei Kyung's luck. Wei Kyung wished that luck existed. However, she knew that it wasn't on her side. Many pairs of footsteps could be heard from the entrance of the salt cave, and we dot June's soldiers appeared. Hundreds of steps away from them, down the straight corridor of the mine. There they are. Siran barely managed to get up at the shout of the warrior. Then we, June, who commanded the soldiers, said, The lizard man has lost a lot of blood. And this is a salt mine. He won't be able to break through the walls and run away like he did before. Those words seemed to raise the soldiers' fighting spirits, and the warriors slowly approached Siran with their spears. We, Kyung also got up and stood beside Siran. She didn't believe in luck. However, she had learned how to fight alongside Siran without getting in his way in the past three weeks. All right. I at least won't die blaming my curse. If I die, it'll simply be my fault. Just like Siran stayed by my side even when he thought it was dangerous. But we dot Kyung's predictions were wrong. As the soldiers and their fires got thirty steps closer, a blue light flashed between Siran and the group of soldiers. It was one who could be called luck. Siran, Wei Kyung, Wei Jun, and his soldiers were all mesmerized for a moment by the bright blue light flickering within the salt mine. The light formed into a flashing sphere that cast shadows behind the people in the cave. 
those who had good vision were able to make out a strange square dot shaped creature fluttering in the air. And as the mind began to dim, all the other people were also able to see the creature. Just as the bright light disappeared, everyone heard a voice coming from within their hearts. I am. The flashing blue stingray spoke. I am PZZT. We, Kyung, who was used to surprising and novel things, heard the name and instinctively asked, Your name is PZZT. PZZT didn't react in any way. It was the result of lots of practice. PZZT looked at Siran and talked to him. Siran Mule, you have been chosen. Chapter 38 Automation on a scale you are listening at novel full dot audio. Siran didn't seem happy at the words that he was chosen. We, June was merely making a stab in the dark, but he was right. There were five chosen ones in the black, scaled lizard men tribe. Lockrack, Zale, Yur, Owen, and the Star Catcher. No one knew why, but until now, they had been the only ones receiving God's special grace. So the fact that Siran was chosen meant. Did someone die? PZZT's light dimmed instead of flashing while replying to Siran. The Star Catcher. Siran closed his eyes for a moment and showed his condolences by mumbling to himself. In the meantime, we. June's soldiers seemed confused and hesitant to approach PZZT since they had never seen anything like it. Nothing changed even when we. June told them to go ahead from behind them. You damn cowards! Bring a bow and arrow. Where are the archers? PZZT looked back at we, June and the soldiers. There are annoying things here. And that human woman over there. Yes. No, never mind. I can't do anything about them because I am only here to carry out God's will. I'll deal with them myself. But PZZT, why me, asked Siran. God chose you himself, so I don't really know the reason. But you probably think you deserve it. Aren't you the second best warrior of your clan? At those words, Siran slowly nodded. You don't have to worry about them anymore. You will now act on behalf of God, and when you do so, you can borrow his power. Starting when, do you mean? PZZT flashed. Starting now. PZZT glowed as he disappeared just like when he had appeared. The salt mine then returned to darkness save for a few lit torches. We, Kyung quietly whispered, so that strange creature, it is the one who oversees the power of lightning in place of God. And you have just been chosen by God. Yes. Siran looked at we, June and said, I thought there would be a complex ritual and process to follow, and that one would practice and get used to the power during that process, but I guess not. Then what? The power is within me, and I know exactly how to use it. Siran grabbed the spear sticking out of his back with his left hand. Then he pulled on the spear and covered the wound on his back with his right hand. PZT. A spark scorched Saren's wound, and it smelled like burning flesh. Siran. I'm okay. I've become energized after I got the power. And this kind of pain, Siran then took out the remaining spear piece sticking out in front of him and scorched the wound before blood could gush out. That is nothing. We, Kyung knew that the pain wasn't nothing judging by Saren's facial expression, but she decided not to say anything, she wanted to protect the warrior's pride. Then we, Jun yelled, what are you all doing? The monster disappeared. Attack now. I don't think they understood what just happened, said we, Kyung. Then I'll have to make them understand. Siran held his sword in his right hand and spread his left palm open. Electric lights began to flash between his fingers. Wee Jun was the first to notice. Damn, there's no way, Wee Jun was quick dot witted and also physically fast. While the soldiers charged at Siran with their spears, oblivious to what was happening, Wee Jun escaped Saren's field of vision and ran away from the corridor. Boom. Those who were closest to Siran could only see light, while the soldiers who were farther away saw a thunderbolt shoot out from Saren's left hand and hit the corner of the salt mine. 
As for those struck by the lightning, they could no longer see anything. As the thunder echoed in the cave, several soldiers collapsed onto the ground after getting hit. It was easy to tell what had happened to them by the smell of burning flesh and the white steam rising from their bodies. Intelligible crying and screaming echoed. Only a few words could be discerned. I doubt it's the chosen one. Run. There were soldiers who threw their spears and ran away, and there were even some who fainted on the spot. Siran didn't chase after those who had fled and instead looked down at his hand. Wei Kyung came up to him. Are you okay? Oh, yes. I'm fine. I just thought I should use this power carefully. It's too much for an individual to handle. I think I now know why God only gave this power to a few people. Wei Kyung nodded after glancing down at the bodies burned to death by lightning. With this power, why is it that the black, scale tribe isn't fighting the Years Cut tribe? I don't really know much about the Years Cut tribe since I've been following Owen around until recently, but I think it's because the Years Cut tribe have something similar. And there's a problem with this power. What kind of problem? This power can't be used infinitely. I'm feeling a kind of mental exhaustion. I think I should rest and smoke medicinal herbs to recover from it. We Kyung replied, what happens if all that mental energy is used up? Don't worry. I only get tired. And I still have more than enough energy now. I feel a lot better now that I'm not bleeding. Sarian's physical condition didn't seem so good to Wee Kyung, but she nodded anyway. There were a few more clashes in the salt mine. We Jun didn't give up. He reorganized the soldiers that had escaped and blocked the entrance of the mine. Then a saber-toothed tiger that seemed to have gotten lost in the mine attacked Siran. But Siran defeated all of them with the power of lightning. When we dot Kyung and Siran came out of the salt mine, only we Jun and about fifteen soldiers remained. You got to me in the end. We Jun clenched his fists as if he had been wronged and stared at we Kyung. Wee Kyung thought he was ridiculous. You should think about who started all of this in the first place. You're the one who brought that wicked lizard into our castle. You were the one who eventually involved the smelly gnolls and lizard men in this succession fight, when it should have been a fight between our siblings. I didn't, no, since when did we have such rules? Don't be stupid. You can never think far enough. Do you think automation will be fine if you become the lord with the help of outsiders? Humans would be pushed out and swallowed by another species. Even if you got lucky and that didn't happen, automation would become in danger due to the interests of either the Ears Cut tribe or the Black, Scaled Lizardmen tribe. Do you really want to see the walls of automation attacked? With Sai Ran by her side, we Kyung sighed and walked forward. We dot Junior the one that's stupid. Father has given his blood, sweat, and tears to protect automation, but that also means that we've become passive since we can't easily change and adapt. The world is big and wide. There are many other big tribes like the Years Cut tribe and the Black, Scaled Lizard Men tribe out there along the northern coast and in the continent at large, but Father didn't want to get involved and trade with any of them because he was afraid that interests of each tribe would clash with one another. And this is the result of that. But, Wee Jun tried to interject, but Wee Kyung didn't stop talking. To be honest, I don't even know if this result is bad. Every relationship is a deal. If you gain something, you also lose something. The walls of automation might get attacked. What would that do? As far as I know, automation has the tallest ramparts in this area. Tell anyone to attack if they're confident enough. Father couldn't put his most valuable trade product on the scale because he loved and cherished it so much. But I'm not a coward like father. I'll get something greater in return by giving up automation. We Kyung noticed we dot Jun's gaze turned to something behind her as she said that. Siren. No, that's not it. It's something further back. We Kyung was about to turn around, but she could sense that it was already too late. Wee Jun had already signaled with his finger. 
Wee Kyung realized that Wee Jun had prepared one last move. She got caught up with Siren and had been attacking using force until now, forgetting the kind of person she was, but finally, she was realizing her true talent. That finger signal was sent to an assassin behind me. It was likely to be an arrow as she was too far out for someone to throw a dagger from their hiding place. There were bags of salt stacked on top of the small storage place at the entrance to the salt mine, and they would likely be hiding there. Siren would probably react as soon as the arrow was shot, but he might be a little late. Then the arrow would shoot into my back. For some reason, Wee Kyung was able to picture the shape of the arrow and the trajectory the arrow would follow. What is the arrowhead made of? It's an arrowhead made of iron. The hardness of the material probably means it came from the inner continent. What about the feathers? Three rooster feathers. Where would it strike? In the middle of your heart. By the looks of their shaking hands, they don't seem like a skilled archer. But that shakiness would luckily cause your heart to get shot. Wee Kyung realized that she wasn't thinking to herself, but talking to a voice inside of her. You are, are you going to tell me to shut up again? No, you will die if you stay like this. And I will too. You too. Do you think you can stop the arrow? No. I'm too slow. Siren will also barely miss it. How do you think we can stop this arrow? How would we stop an arrow that has already been shot? Use your imagination. Think about the bowstring being pulled, the assassin taking a deep breath, and when they're aiming at you. You've missed a lot of things because your horns aren't fully grown yet. Think of anything. I don't know. If the wind were to blow, then the voice inside Wee Kyung, who seemed to be angry, became calm. Wind. Wind, I see. Okay. Wind is always on my side. Wee Kyung could feel it. She felt a gust of wind blowing behind her back. Lo she then said to the voice inside of her, What are you? Are you asking for my name? No, then are you asking about my species? I am a spirit of demonic magic. We have survived long enough to lose memory of the Creator and our time of birth, and we live beside old temples of fallen gods, or in old blood like yours. No, I didn't mean to hear that kind of explanation. What are you? Are you the curse that has bothered me? Or, you're asking about the nature of my existence. I am not the curse that you thought I was until now, and I'm not a misfortune that haunts you, either. But the explanation of luck given by the lizard man, who just got empowered by my demonic magic friend, is lacking. Friend. The voice inside of her continued to talk. I am, a complicated being. I choose the appropriate path out of all the possibilities that infinitely unfold into the future. I determine the possible and impossible paths, and choose the one that produces benefits. Can you explain it more simply? I manipulate probabilities. The arrow that flew toward Wee Kyung lost its strength after being caught in a sudden gust of wind. The sky, hundreds of meters above automation. A system window appeared in front of Sung Woon. Demonic magic enchanted Wee Kyung has become aware of the enchantment. The hidden demonic magic is now revealed. Demonic magic. Unknown, demonic magic. Probability, Sung Woon heard Hegemonia shout through the video call. No way. It wasn't a curse. Of course. Did you think I was crazy enough to choose a cursed individual? But when I saw Wee Dot Kyung's character history, she definitely seemed like a cursed, Hegemonia fell silent when the answer came to them. Sung, Woon held in his laughter and said, who would have created that history? Chapter 39 Successor you are listening at Novel Full Audio. Every unique entity in the Lost World had a history tab that could be checked when players clicked view more, which provided a brief summary of the entity's life since they were born or came into existence. Take Lockrack as an example of characters players paid attention to. 
His history tab was filled with God.related entries and countless other accomplishments rather than trivial information about him. For any ordinary character, on the other hand, information such as their job, spouse, how many children they had, or how many times they almost died would be recorded. Therefore, history was a kind of profile for characters. We. Kyung's history was roughly as follows. Dot. Age 13, Automation Market. Fell down the stairs because the stairs got swamped with people. Age 14, Automation's Inner Palace. Fell down from the bathroom into the sewer. Automation Alleyway. Attacked by a masked hooligan 3 kilometers southwest of Automation. Got picked on and fought with children of the same age. Automation Salt Storage. Locked up for four days for stealing. Automation Market. Jar filled with water fell overhead. Age 15, 5 kilometers southeast of Automation. Attacked by a herd of stray dogs overnight. Dot. Age 21, 12 kilometers southwest of Automation. Fell 7 meters down a cliff with a wheelbarrow loaded with silk. The Gill family stares at Automation. Attacked by a vagrant goblin group. Hunter's Hut at Automation. Attacked by the Sioux family's hunters. Dot. Salt mine entrance of Automation. Attacked by an assassin from behind. There were no exact dates or times because there were no calendar systems in place yet, but with automatic age conversion based on Earth's system, the approximate time could be estimated. Sung, Woon saw Hegemonia get annoyed while scrolling up and down the history tab, which didn't suit the dignified appearance of their horn helmet. No, it isn't there. I didn't see incorrectly, said Hegemonia. What are you talking about, replied Sung, Woon. There's no particular sign of you getting involved. You're not lying about your involvement when you just go lucky, are you? You can think whatever you want. Oh, damn it. It had been some time since Sung, Woon first intervened with automation, but it wasn't that. Long ago. We, Kyung was born before all the other players were summoned to this world in the first place. It's been about eight years. Sung, Woon believed one of the most important things in the lost world was reconnaissance. Discovering species, tribes, abominations, fiends, and ancient ruins in advance and coming up with a plan to benefit from them in the future was the way to get closer to victory. There were some problems though. Players were called gods, but they only got to think by themselves and only had one pair of eyes. If a player didn't utilize the view their small area could provide, they could only observe what was going on by going to the place themselves with their divine body. Fortunately enough, small area. Insects was one of the areas good for conducting proper reconnaissance. But the best for that would be small area. Birds, Ednl.co in any case, Sung, Woon didn't find it odd that Hegemonia would have thought that demonic magic enchanted Wee, Kyung was cursed. There were many ways to obtain demonic magic in the lost world. Among them, ancient ruins were the most exemplary, but the more common way was to have an entity who was demonic magic enchanted nearby. There were deviations for each species, but demonic magic enchanted individuals were randomly born and could be distinguished by certain characteristics, such as we. Kyung's horns, which would grant the individual the special skill of demonic magic. However, while there is good demonic magic like the electric demonic magic that Lockrack got, there is also bad demonic magic. Bad demonic magic was especially hard to distinguish from curses, and Hegemonia had mistook we. Kyung's demonic magic as the misfortune curse. Curses can be useful, but it's a burden to have it in the beginning when the characters are still physically growing. The misfortune curse is also the worst. All kinds of misfortunes arise when a character has it. In fact, Sung, Woon thought it was only natural for Hegemonia, who didn't seem to lack in skills or experience, to mistake the probability demonic magic for the misfortune curse. Because even I thought that way in the beginning. Eight years ago, Sung, Woon had observed several individuals at automation with Wee, Seo and his children as his main focus. 
Automation would serve as a major base in the future, so he knew he would come back there even though it would be in the distant future for Lockrack's clan at the time. The Lord of Automation, Weep Seo, was better in terms of abilities compared to an average person, and his children also inherited some of his greater than average traits. However, the most unusual character that grabbed Sung Dut Woon's attention was Weep Kyung. When I first saw her history, I thought I didn't have to read further to figure out that she had the misfortune curse. But Sung, Woon didn't jump to conclusions just because the probability was high. This world was obviously based on the lost world, but it was real, and there was something that made him uneasy. Moreover, he had time to spare to observe her further. Sung, Woon managed his locust swarms while watching Lokrak's clan every now and then. He also kept vigilant of other powers and, at the same time, observed other major bases like automation with the goal of taking over them in the future. His observations resulted in him discovering an assassination against Wee. Kyung. One of the servants inside the automation castle had used a hammer to hit the floor of the bathroom to the point that the floor would break if someone were to step on it. Sung, Woon couldn't tell what that was for at first, but soon realized after Wee Kyung went into the bathroom. It was an assassination attempt targeting Wee Kyung. If she fell into the sewer, she would likely die, and even if she didn't, she would at least have a broken limb and eventually starve to death, not being able to find her way out in the dark sewer. And even if she found her way out and lived, there would be no way for her to find out who planned it. All the records in her history do seem like accidents, but they could also be the results of someone's intervention. Then this might not be the first attempt at her life. Well, let's save her first. However, Sun Dot Woon's first warning to Wee Kyung using his swarm of flies hadn't worked. Wee Kyung only thought the flies were annoying and stepped onto the tampered floor. She then tumbled and fell into the old sewer. She calmly assumed it was because of her curse, and Sung Woon was the one who was more surprised. She lived through this. Without even getting hurt. Sung Woon then created fireflies to guide Wee Kyung to escape, but Sung Woon knew that Wee Kyung would have made it out alive without his fireflies. Because this was when Sung Woon realized Wee Kyung didn't have the misfortune curse, but rather probability demonic magic. Siren was puzzled after seeing the arrow drop behind Wee Dot Kyung's back. He knew he wouldn't be able to grab it in time, so he was ready to shoot out a thunderbolt, but the arrow suddenly fell to the ground in a gust of wind. The wind itself isn't strange since we're in front of a cave, but it's strange that the wind was strong enough to overturn an arrow already shot. It's not impossible, but, Saren's next move had already been decided. A thunderbolt struck from Saren's hand before the assassin could pick up their second arrow. Boom. The assassin fell as the currents ran through him and collapsed, his body charred black. Small flames rose from his split skin and sizzled as the fat burned. Siren put his arm around Wee Kyung and asked, Are you okay? Oh, yes. Thank you. Wee Kyung definitely felt the time passing by. She thought that everything was finally going as it should have. As Wee Kyung raised her head, Wee Jun seemed embarrassed that his last move didn't go as planned. All the soldiers simply stood by him with their spears, intimidated by the thunder. Wee Kyung then said, I'm going to kill you and become the next Lord of Automation. Don't be ridiculous. You're a monster with horns. You never belonged with our siblings in the first place, replied Wee Dot Jun. Wee Jun eventually said what he had been thinking, and Wee Kyung nodded as if she had been hearing such words for a long time. Wee Kyung walked forward with her sword and looked back at Siren. Sarian, help me. Of course. Then the dawn broke, bringing about a blue sky, and the clip dot clops of horse galloping could be heard. Stop. Wee Kyung had no intention to stop what she was about to do even if it were someone's errand boy shouting, but she recognized the voice immediately. The man rode towards Wee Kyung with his back to the morning sky. I told you to stop. Wee Jun, Wee Kyung. Father. Wee Seo had arrived with his horse. 
Behind weak CO, we dot CO subordinates and soldiers could be seen running up the Sioux family's stairs. Hegemonia clenched their fists and shouted, Yes, it's done. What do you mean? replied Sung Woon. It was worth summoning the saber toothed tiger to shamelessly by some time. That I guess you knew that was a shameless move. Anyways, what do you mean it's done? Hegemonia laughed from inside their helmet. Can't you tell? I, who bought enough time, already won. Really? Sung Woon smiled under his mask. All right. Let's hear why you think that way. Hegemonia said, you must have forgotten because you were so focused on we.co's children fighting each other, but our contradicting prophecy was on who would be chosen as we.co's successor. First of all, as long as we.co is there, all soldiers of automation will follow we.co's orders. Even if the soldiers belong to a family, only when the Lord isn't present do they act on their own as long as it doesn't oppose the Lord's will. So what? What do you mean? We CEO will definitely choose We Jun as the next successor. He'll probably choose right on the spot, and there's nothing We Kyung can do after that's decided. The seat of the Lord of Automation is very special. It's not one that can be taken just by killing We CEO. And if legitimacy is broken, all the other families won't just watch and do nothing. Sung Woon shook his head and said, No, your assumption itself is wrong. Why would we CO choose we Jun as his successor? What? Isn't it obvious? You've seen everything until now. We Jun is the one who politically aligns with we CO. Even though we dot Kyung's way of thinking is more correct, it's different from we dot CO's. And we CO is aware of all this. Sung Woon stayed still with his arms crossed. Hey, wait. Did you just laugh? asked Hegemonia. No. I didn't laugh. I just heard you laugh. I'm telling you. I didn't. What is this feeling? Why does something seem off? We Seo walked between We Jun and We Kyung. There's no need to fight anymore. I will choose the next successor right here, right now. Wee Jun seemed a bit surprised, but thought this was rather a good turn of events. While he wasn't as convinced as Hegemonia, Wee Jun thought he was likely to become the next lord. However, Wee Kyung seemed to think differently as she looked at Wee Seo. Father, I have something I want to tell you first. Wee Seo heard those words quite often, so he almost instinctively replied, I'm busy now, let's talk later. But as he looked into Wee Dot Kyung's eyes, his mind seemed to go blank. Your horns have grown quite long. Yes, and you've cut your beard. What is it you want to tell me? Wee Kyung always thought that the words about to come out of her mouth would be hard to say, but it was easier than she thought. Why have you been trying to kill me all this time? Behind Wee Kyung, Siran nodded. We Jun stared like he didn't know what that meant, and we Seo stayed silent. From far away, Hegemonia was visibly baffled. Sun Woon laughed at Hegemonia's reaction. The reason why we Kyung seemed cursed was because of we Seo. We Seo has wanted to kill we Kyung ever since she was young. Of course, he couldn't do it with his own hands because of the pressure from the other families. He would have been embarrassed to reveal his personal vengeance, no, his personal grudge. So his assassination attempts were rather rare and careful. But because of that, we. Kyung's demonic magic was able to prevent those assassination attempts without much difficulty. We Seo then said, since when do you know? Well, I think I knew a long time ago, but I just convinced myself it wasn't true. Because I didn't want to believe it was true. You probably don't remember Ryo. We Kyung hadn't heard that name in a while. I married three women, but Ryo was the only one I ever really loved with my heart. I was trying my best and doing everything I could to protect automation, but once I looked back, I found my journey full of scars. When I thought I couldn't do it anymore, Ryo came into my life. I thought I could push on as long as Ryo was next to me. But, mother passed away while giving birth to me. 
we, CO readily admitted that. Yes. I believed Ryo died because of you. Because you were born with those damn horns. So I thought you had a damn curse. But that wasn't true. We, Kyung lightly tapped one of her horns with her finger. She could feel it being tapped as they weren't fully grown yet. My horns didn't contain such a curse. You even told me that I was born ripping my mother's stomach with my horns, but if you think about it, that's strange. Horns are things that grow, and they wouldn't have been so long when I was born. That was a lie too, wasn't it? Yes. Ryo didn't die while giving birth to you. Her fever was severe. The midwife said Ryo was too weak to give birth. We, Kyung nodded. She felt somewhat relieved now with the guilt of killing her own mother lifted. On the other hand, we, Seo seemed to have become more tired and dreary. We, Jun and we, Kyung had never seen him like that. They might come to know what he was feeling as they get older. That's enough talking about mother. Choose your successor. We, Jun, who had been holding in what he wanted to say during their conversation, suddenly blurted out, Father. Don't tell me you're going to decide on who gets to be lord out of personal guilt. We, Jun seemed somewhat relaxed after saying it, but his eyes couldn't stay still. That wasn't the case for We, Kyung. In We. Seo's opinion, We, Kyung seemed determined about something before she even spoke with him. How is this so, Kyung? It seems like you're the one making this decision, and not me. We, Seo opened his mouth to speak. His voice was slightly husky. I don't have any reason to push this any further, so I'll decide now. The next Lord of Automation to follow in my footsteps will be, meanwhile, Hegemonia realized the sudden change in the situation. Hegemonia clasped their hands together and impatiently muttered. Please, please. God, Buddha, Allah, that won't work. Chapter 40 Looter you are listening at NovelFull.audio As everyone silently watched We.Co's mouth, We.Kyung's time seemed to have stopped. We.Kyung said to her horns, look at father's mouth. He's saying we. What about the next word? I can't tell. Look more carefully at the shape of his mouth. I can see now. After we, the shape of his mouth is about to change. I get it. If he was about to say June, the shape of his mouth wouldn't change. His upper lip is slowly opening. He's going to say Kyung. Then does that mean I am Automation's next owner? Yes. We, Kyung thought of something. Then the spirit of her demonic magic said, it seems something's on his mind. Father is running away. He said he would do justice, but he's trying to relieve his guilt by giving up the seat for the next lord. You're right. And a rumor will spread. A rumor. A rumor in automation saying that father tried to kill his own child with horns, and for that reason, he gave the seed up to that child. I see how that would come to be. Then the four families would question my ability. As well as the citizens of the castle. They'll think I became the lord by chance because of father's guilt and external forces. Then what would happen? Automation would fall. People won't follow me, and there will be people who leave the castle. If automation loses its life, people will start talking about the four families, followed by the Lord. Would they attempt assassination? They might. If the Lord of Automation dies, someone else within automation would become the next Lord. Some people might think that's worth the risk. So we should prevent such things from happening. We, Kyung then suddenly said to her horns, Hey, horns. My powers do come from your horns, but I'm not horns. You know that's not the important part. Yes. You said you manipulate, probability, right? And that also means possibilities. Can you manipulate father's thoughts? That's a possibility, isn't it? No. Then what about father's mouth? I can't manipulate things that have a conscience. Really. I can't solve all your problems. I hope that misfortunes don't happen to you, 
but you have no choice but to accept the end result, even if it's a catastrophic one. That's not true. We. Kyung's time began to go normally. I was only curious if I could have the help of your powers. I'll handle my own problems. Okay. The next Lord of Automation will be we, Father. We, Seo paused and looked at we, Kyung with tired eyes. What is it? I've thought about this, and I should have the next seat to be Lord. What are you saying? Give me the seat. Are you threatening me? Yes. At those words, we, Jun yelled, Father, did you just hear her? She doesn't have the right to be your successor anymore. I can't believe she's threatening you for the seat. That's absurd. We, CEO raised his hand to stop we. Jun. Okay, let's hear it. You are with a black, scaled lizard men warrior right now, Kyung. And you each have a sword. However, I have brought all the soldiers of all four families, who protect automation. These soldiers have spears and swords, some are even on horses, and some have bows. Do you really think you can threaten me in this kind of situation, Kyung? Yes. We, Kyung grabbed Saren's wrist and held it up. This lizard man is not just any warrior from the black, scaled lizard men tribe. He is a chosen one. Siren recognized We. Kyung's intentions and generated electricity with his palm. We, Seo didn't react in any way, but some of the soldiers exclaimed. I don't know if this lizard man can kill everyone here, but I do now he's capable of killing you and running away with me. Father, that's a lie. That lizard man is already injured and exhausted, said We. Jun. We, Seo seemed to be gauging We. Kyung's words. So what? What if you kill me? What are you going to do about the seat of the next lord? If I die without naming a successor, the seat will go to anyone within automation. That's not what you want, is it? Probably. But this warrior has already promised me. The black, scaled lizard men tribe will make me lord, that this was a lie, but Siren knew what she was getting at. And no one would think it was a lie that the chosen one would be her protector. But as I said, if I die, the seat will be given to an unknown being within automation, we, Seo seemed to have come to the realization as he was talking. Then we, Kyung said, yes. There is a way though. The black, scaled lizard men tribe warriors just need to kick everyone out of the castle. Of course some would fight back with the lord's authority, but how would they defeat the black, scaled lizard men tribe warriors? We, Seo got lost in thought, and we, Jun began hurling curses. Those who could hear him among we. Seo's subordinates seemed surprised. Until now, the Ears Cut tribe had been the one blocking the black, scaled tribe, but in reality, the Ears Cut tribe didn't really have much influence inside automation. This was due to the fact that we, Jun tried to break off his connections with the Ears Cut tribe which made Sarian, someone from the black, scaled tribe, more influential. We, Seo said, then there's nothing I can do. We, Jun shouted that it couldn't be true, but everyone could still clearly hear we. Seo's voice. The next Lord of Automation is you, we, Kyung. Word that the Lord of Automation had changed immediately spread within automation. And the star of the conversation was we, Kyung, who used to be called a scoundrel, and not one of the other siblings. People were more surprised that we, Kyung had colluded with the black, scaled tribe and threatened we, Seo, who was known as a ruthless character who had reigned over automation until now, thus obtaining the seat to be lord. All the citizens of automation simply thought it all happened by chance, and some even believed it was all a part of we. Seo's trick. There were some who said that we, Kyung had disguised herself until now, and that she planned on taking the seat to be lord a long time ago. The real star of all the rumors had lots to learn from her father to be a lord, so she didn't even leave the palace for a few days. That I can't believe something this ridiculous has really happened. For the past few days, he, Jun watched as the power transfer took place. But there were no plot twists. None of the four families opposed we, Kyung becoming the next lord. Wealthy residents of automation also decided to wait and see what would happen, 
like she was no different from Lee. June. They're just letting that bitch be. Who teamed up with a lizard? We June decided to leave automation, but he had no thoughts on becoming a vagrant. There were rumors that in the inner region of the continent, there was a large group of humans. Not as big as the Ears Cut tribe or the Black, Scaled tribe, but formidable all the same. I'll go there and build my strength. The things I have heard and seen here will certainly have some value. And I will come back. Father, you will regret this. After preparing everything, Week Jun headed to the stable where his horse was. Weak Jun saw someone inside and grabbed the dagger in his coat. He seems like a stable boy. I'm sorry, but no one can see me until tomorrow morning. Weak Jun carefully called out to the person in the shadow. Hey you. The person raised their head and slowly walked out of the shadow. We June took a good look and realized that it wasn't a stable boy like he had expected. Siren walked into the torchlight. We June, did you know it was me? You damn lizard. Well, I guess not. Move. I came for my horse. With all that luggage. We June frowned as Siren pointed at his packed belongings. What does it matter to you no matter where I go? We June walked past Siran as he spoke. They were in close proximity, but We June wasn't confident that he could kill Siran. We June just hoped that Siran wouldn't get in his way, and as if to make up for him not doing so well the past three weeks, Sarian silently watched We June get on his horse. We June loaded his luggage. After getting onto the horse himself, he said to Siran, Are you not stopping me? I have no intentions of getting in your way, we. June. In my opinion, it doesn't matter if you stay or go somewhere else. You won't be able to achieve what you want. That's a foolish curse. We. June was about to say more, but there was no reason for him to provoke Siran. And he left without saying goodbye. Siran then mumbled to himself while watching we. June leave, but there are lots of people who think differently. I can't just leave a foolish source of trouble like you around we, Kyung. HM, now that I think of it, you weren't wrong. Sarian took the torch in the stable and shook it. The fishmonger in the distance saw the torch shaking and waved a blue flag from a roof. The Su family's miner nodded and knocked on the door in the very corner of the alleyway he was standing in. Then a goblin sitting inside ran out onto the rampart. The goblin went to the goblin boss who was sitting on top of the rampart. With sign language, he spoke to the boss. Boss, he is apparently on his way. Dot. Okay. Dot. The boss covered his face with his black hood, stood up on the rampart, and drew his sword. The gatekeeper we, June bribed had left the gate open just so his horse could pass through. He passed the gate without sensing the danger he was in. The boss jumped down from the rampart and swung his sword. The horse was startled when a black figure suddenly appeared in front of it, but became calm again as the black figure stroked it. The horse then felt something drop on its back and roll onto the ground, unperturbed. The goblin boss picked up Wee Dot June's head from the ground and got onto the horse. He wanted to repay Wee Kyung and Siran for sparing his life and treating him kindly, and killing Wee. June was only a small part of his repayment. However, the boss knew that bad rumors would spread about Wee Kyung if everyone found out about Wee Dot Jun's death. Therefore, he had no choice but to wait for Wee Jun to run away himself. I'm glad it didn't take so long. It was planned for Wee Jun to disappear just like this. The boss looked back at automation once before riding out with the dead body. Hegemonia always spoke with their arms crossed in the video chat. Their eagle eyed eyes were fierce under the helmet. All right. I lost, said Hegemonia. You don't seem like someone who lost. You're very composed. One who doesn't accept their loss can't grow. Why have you become a wise quote generator? If you thought I would get angry, yell, and demand to do it again because I lost, you thought wrong. Okay. Sorry. I misjudged you. 
Sun, Woon was initially concerned about Hegemonia's sharp attitude, but was glad to see it. I am a little upset, but, dot. Sung, Woon thought that couldn't be helped as long as they were human. Sung, Woon then said, what about your penalty? It's manageable. Due to a sudden event, my year's cut tribe has been hit with a cold wave right after the rainy season was over, but that won't be too much of a problem. The bigger problem is that my divinity level has gone down a bit, oh, no, no. Pretend you didn't just hear that. On the contrary, Sung.Woon's divinity level XP, as well as We.Kyung's and Saren's abilities, all skyrocketed. It hadn't occurred yet, but there would soon be a good event since he succeeded with his prophecy. Their level went down. Sung, Woon thought about the battle route Hegemonia's main tribe, the Ears Cut tribe, pursued. He didn't ponder for long, realistically, it'd be hard for the tribe to catch up now. And Hegemonia's next move could benefit Sung, Woon. So what are you gonna do now? They won't be able to stay there for long. Right. So I'm gonna go west. You mean you're gonna go to the inner part of the continent? Yes. Anyone not as confident in their skills would be reluctant to go west. Most tribes would have settled down by now, so even if there were conflicts between them, they would be a united front against a nomadic tribe if one appeared. However, Hegemonia didn't seem to care so much about that and said, I'll go all the way, to the other side. To the west coast of the continent. Yes. It'll be unlikely for you to run into me for a while. Sung, Woon believed that Hegemonia had a plan. Are they thinking about crossing the continent while getting technology from all the other species on the way to develop civilization along the coast? That means they must have obtained a skill or an ability related to sailing. No matter what, this was an advantage for Sung, Woon. Hegemonia's ears cut tribe was considered one of the larger tribes at the moment. If Hegemonia began to pressure other tribes in the continent, they wouldn't be able to pay as much attention to what was going on in the east. I even have automation now, so I don't have to pay too much attention to what goes on in the inner continent. I'll reap the benefits in the meantime. What's left now? Is it the northern coast and the other half of the peninsula? Sung, Woon looked down. His harvest had already begun. The market at automation. Merchants already forgot about the recent uproar and were bargaining and trading goods. I've never seen silk like this before. Oh. That's strange. Our tribe only had a little, but we did sell these. No, I'm serious. I've never seen anything like this before. Technology really is amazing. Where did you say you came from again? I came from the west. The west. The direction in which the sun sets. Oh, I see. The black, scaled lizard man merchant looked at the troll merchant in front of him and nodded. The lizard man had never seen a troll before. Meeting a new species wasn't all that surprising itself, but the fact that the troll came from the west stood out. The troll merchant then said, We kept looking for a way to come east, but just as we found a path, the ears cut tribe knolls got in our way. We hadn't been able to trade for a while until recently, and we came over here. The lizard man merchant realized that the word east was the opposite of west, thus indicating the direction in which the sun rose. But he didn't think it was too important to learn new words used by strangers. The lizard man merchant asked, so, how much do you intend to pay for these silks? <laughs>